the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. For those of you in front here, I stand by the rod of a higher priesthood. And I decree and declare from tonight, I shift you by the spirit. Step into a new level of speed. Right now, all of you in front, I stand by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic. I shift you to a level 10 years in one. I release you by the grace that God grants to men for nations and for territories. Let the embargo, like Apostle Dandruma was saying, that ties men down, let it be lifted in the name of Jesus. And so we decree, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted ancient doors. Please sit down. I love this ministry because of the flexibility and the openness to the things of the Spirit. Oftentimes, the Holy Spirit is limited by our religion, limited by our philosophy, our education. These things are important. But let me tell you this, when you come before God, it is important for you to understand that we must be flexible enough to allow the spirit of the living God to bless, to lift, to change, to transform. Hallelujah. Bring the two ladies from the choir. The Lord is saying it's a new season. An anointing, two of them. Not all of you, just two ladies. Their hand of God is coming on them in the choir two of them it's a new season for you remember not the former things nor consider the things of old for behold i do a new thing behold i do a new thing behold i do a new thing We give you the highest, the highest praise to the King. We give you the loudest, the loudest praise to the King. We lift up holy hands, the highest praise to the King. We lift up holy hands. Worship, worship the highest praise to the King. You have taken all the glory, you have taken all the worship, you have taken all the sorrows, you have taken all the pain, you have made them yours. Highest praise. Ephesians chapter 3 Thank you again sir for the opportunity May the Lord bless you I think we should take it from where Where the man of God started Since he started it then we we'll take it from there Yesterday we began to discuss 
the platforms that are available for the believer to reveal the Christ. Are we together now? And number one, we said that the first platform provided for by which the saints can know God is scripture and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture which is able to make you wise unto salvation. That scripture is the first platform provided for through which we can know and understand God. Number two, we said that the knowledge of God can be obtained from the names of God. The name of God is a representation of the dimension, a dimension of him that has been so revealed that the nation of Israel captured God and his dealings in names. And that every name of God represented a dimension of possibility that was contained in God. Number three, we said the third platform to know God was through the revelation of the person, the man, Christ. Are we together? Yes. The Bible calls him the express image of God. The image of the invisible God. It says God who in sundry times and diverse manners spake to us through the prophets. He said hath in these last days spoken to us through his son whom he hath appointed to be heir of all things. Who being the brightness of his image the Bible says that he upholds all things by the word of his power. So the revelation of Jesus, I told us that until Jesus came, many people did not know who God was because he was invisible. They only depended on the revelation of the prophets and their perspectives. So when Jesus came, he came as a standard. He came as a correction of our perceptions about God. So that everything we saw in Jesus, the Christ, that was all that was in God. He was a revelation of the character of God. And then we rounded up yesterday by revealing that the fourth platform that allows the saints to know God is our experiences. It is true that in the kingdom we not only believe by faith alone, we can taste and see that the Lord is good. There is an experience to our dealings with God. Hallelujah. It says, that which we have seen, that which we have heard, that which our hands have handled of the word of life. This, these, are, these are experiences. It was Habakkuk that says, I will stand upon my watch and set myself upon the tower. Just, just allow them, when they are done, they can stand up and walk away. We bring them out like this because whilst the service is going on, there's something God is doing in them. There's something God is birthing. There's something God is bringing into them. I will stand upon my watch and set myself upon the tower and I will see what the Lord will say unto me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And tonight, very quickly, I just want to take on one of the aspects. The revelation of Jesus Christ through the last platform that I will be teaching called the church. That the church is also a platform mandated to reveal Christ. There is a dimension of the unveiling of the Christ that can only be made possible through his ecclesia, the church. Please pay attention. This is very powerful. Ephesians chapter 3 from verse 9 and 10. Ephesians chapter 3. Just like the man of God began to share theologically speaking, the city of Ephesus was a city that was saddled with a lot of witchcraft and activities of necromancers and so on and so forth. It was a city that was under siege, under a princess, a, a, a witch called Diana. Hallelujah. So when Paul came there, he was not talking to a people who were naive spiritually. These were people who had been accustomed to spiritual things. It's theologically stated that it was at Ephesus that Paul manifested the zenith of his apostolic ministry. The construction of his discourse was that which was from both an intellectual standpoint and then an apostolic standpoint. The hallmark of his office was demonstrated in Ephesus. Are we together? Chapter 3, please. And 
then verse 9 Paul began to teach if you start from verse 1 of chapter 3 he began to give us the basis of his discourse so that we would not credit him for pride Paul began to speak he said look by revelation I was granted access to this mystery so that when you read my writings you will understand the basis of my speakings lest you charge me with pride I was a man who was granted access to a certain grace and this is the grace the grace that makes men see there is an anointing that causes men to see Paul was given this grace the fortitude to create illumination in a hearer regardless of educational background regardless of level of orient your level of orientation that when you sustain that grace whoever comes under the influence of your communication is compelled to comprehend the things that you are saying it's a grace that can make men but that's not where i'm going to it says to see the fellowship which from the beginning of the world had been hid in God who created all things by Christ Jesus. Go to verse 10, please. To the intent, all of these revelations that were given to Paul was to this intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the, help me please, by the, not by angels, not by spirits, to be known by the church, the manifold, multifaceted wisdom of God. There is a dimension of the revelation of the Christ that has been mandated to be revealed by his ecclesia, the church. Now, to begin my discussion tonight, I must share with us what we call the law of territory. There is a law called the law of territory. Please look up. That means that every territory has its rules for habitation. Are we together now? The realm of the spirit as a spiritual atmosphere has its requirement if you must survive there. The earth realm as a territory also has its rules for habitation. And it so happens that the law of territory for earth is that you must have a body to be legitimate here. Are we together now? That means if you do not sustain a material body that is built from the elements of that ecosystem, you are illegal. Just, just follow me. Are we together? So every body or every spirit that is allowed within this domain must qualify by sustaining a material body that was made from the elements compatible with that ecosystem. That means the elements of nature should not be antagonistic to your body. If the elements fight you, they are being manipulated by powers that be. Because you were built in, in resonance to all of them. The trees and the plants should not kill you. So when food kills you, there is a spirit manipulating it. Because it was designed to be compatible with your makeup. Are we two together please? The law of territory. That anything that does not have a material body cannot function in the earth. Now follow me. The Bible tells us in Revelations that there was war in heaven. Are we together? And it was the war I explained to us yesterday. The judgment of Lucifer. That old serpent, the devil. He was casted from heaven and there was no more place for him. He was looming around the horizon but could not find expression here because he did not pass through that law of having a body. Humans are not the only inhabitants within this domain of God's kingdom but we are the only authorized inhabitants because our spirits are hosted in a material body. Are we together now? It is because of this reason that demons search for bodies. It is why when demons leave a body, they become uncomfortable. The realm fights them. They are not at ease until they find another body. They can make do with plants. They can make do with lower animals. But the most conducive of all bodies is the human body. Because it was built by God's own architecture. 
the law of territory. You have to understand this. So John, the apostle, is teaching us in chapter 1. He says, in the beginning was the word, the logos of God, the thoughts of God. He says, and the word was with God and the word was God. And so when the discourse about the redemption of man was going on, there was a problem because even the Christ who was seated as the word could not come to the earth without a body. Are we together now? And so a strategy had to be invented to give that word, that spirit, a body so that he would now be a legal inhabitant in the earth. And so he had to search around to look for a woman who would partner with the Holy Spirit in creating a body. He said, a body has thou prepared. A body was prepared to be able to host that spirit. Are we together now? Please follow me. There is a reason why I am sharing this. If you do not understand this, you cannot understand the body of Christ. It's a mystery. One morning, a young virgin, minding her own business, and an angel appears to her and calls her highly favored and then tells her that she's about to be with child without a man. And Mary said, how shall these things be seen that I know not a man? And then the angel Gabriel began to explain to her that the Holy Spirit can do something within her that will supplement for the role of a man. And she should not be shocked when her stomach begins to protrude. Long story short, this woman is pregnant. And then she gives birth to a tiny child. It's only men that call him a baby. Demons were afraid. Because they, they knew what they were seeing. It was only a young body. But the spirit there belonged to the ancient of days. Watch this. Jesus at age 12 is carrying that body in disguise. Because he had to be human. You cannot die for men until you taste of what it means to be a man. The Bible says he was in every way tempted like us. And so at age 12, he's in the temple learning about himself under the mentorship of the rabbis. Are we together now? And then for 18 years, we do not hear about Jesus again. He's absent for 18 years. The next time we see him, he's age 30. He's coming to participate in the ministry of one who came in the spirit and the power of Elijah called John. John was not a prophet. John was not a Baptist. Baptism was a strategy to identify the Christ. That was why it stopped when Jesus was identified. When he was being trained in the wilderness, he was given a secret code. Keep dipping men in water. Whoever comes out of water and you see the heavens open, that is the Christ. Now watch this. John was given the grace for prophecy. Because he came in the spirit and the power of Elijah. John was a witness. But it so happened that the anointing he was carrying was that of a prophet. So he had to see. And when John sees Jesus, he says, behold the lamb. He didn't say behold a young man. He didn't say behold an adult. John was seeing through the eyes of Elijah. Because every time the move of God is about to come. The Bible says whenever... God is about to be revealed. Elijah must come first. It's a spiritual protocol for revival. Every time the move of God must come, the spirit of Elijah must also come first. So now here we see Elijah who comes as a foreigner, disguised in the body of a young prophet. Be careful what is hiding in human bodies. Let me repeat myself. Be careful the mantles, the graces that are hidden in human bodies. So Paul said, know we no man after the flesh. That we discern men. The bodies may be young. The bodies may be frail. But God stores his possibilities in human bodies. Are we still together? 
John looks at Jesus and says, I am not worthy to untie even the latchets of your shoes. Jesus replies by saying, suffer it to be so, so that all scripture would be fulfilled. Listen, Jesus is dipped in water and as soon as he caught, the Bible records that and the heavens opened. Then the father speaks over him and says, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And he compels creation to hear him. Are we together now? When Jesus meets with demons, they look at him and they do not see a 33 year old body. They said, the madman in Gadara, you have come to destroy us. Is this not the ancient of days hiding? And Jesus said, keep quiet, be silent. That means the ancient of days had to go through that law of territory to carry a body. Please listen quietly. And then it gave him access. Now Jesus is about to return to heaven. And the strange thing is he went with his body. That means there is a problem here. Because it means that his program is under threat. The program needs a body. Remember our discussion that without a body, it is illegal for a spirit to function. So now principalities and powers, I'm explaining this scripture, are watching a physical body levitate to heaven. And now they are surprised. What is the mystery behind you returning with your body being coronated at the right hand of the father? Which other body will you use? He said, keep watching. Just give me 10 more days. Keep watching. There were a group of people in a place called the upper room. They didn't even know why they were there. They just knew that they were asked to wait because the promise of the father would come on them. There were bodies without a spirit. And according to James 2 and verse 26, that when a body does not have a spirit, it is dead. So there were dead men in that upper room waiting for the spirit of life to come and resurrect them like he did Jesus. Watch this. Jesus is seated at the right hand. There is a body now. And Satan did not understand that the death of Jesus was to mass produce bodies. The goal was not to hide the Christ in a body. The goal was to create a system of authorization where the Christ can be reproduced in as many bodies this was the agenda from beginning satan descended it and entered into cain to kill because you see until our dispensation we did not know that multiplication could happen by reproduction there was never reproduction until adam there was creation so in satan's curriculum of understanding he did not know that a man can meet with a woman and give birth to many children. So when he trapped Adam and Eve, he thought it was over. Then he sees a woman's stomach bulging. Then he sees another child. And Satan says, I'm in trouble. It's the reason why he started searching for the career of the seed. And God confused him and said, the seed of the woman. Women don't carry seeds. Please sit down. You will never be the same. You've touched His grace. Your life will change. Listen. When Jesus went to hell and the legal claims of justice were fulfilled, when He resurrected, he no longer became the only begotten son. He became the first begotten of we, the brethren. Are we together now? So it's no longer he gave his one and only begotten son. It is now that he has brought by the spirit of glory. He's brought many sons into glory. Watch this. So there is a dimension of the revelation of Christ that is no longer dependent on Jesus, the Son, the Word, 
but dependent on the church this is what your man of god was trying to explain to you remember the bible says in revelation chapter 11 and verse 15 it says and the seventh angel sounded the trumpet and there were voices in heaven saying that the kingdoms of this world the cosmos has become the kingdom of our god and we his christ so our god and we his christ and together now we shall reign because we are the body and he is the head when the church was birthed christ was never called the body he now became the head of that body are we together now yes so there is a body and the formation of that body started with a question this is the question who do men say that i am this is the discourse on the building of the body and some said you are a liar some said you are one of the prophets he said okay you've worked with me but what is your verdict who do you say that i the son of man is and peter speaking by the spirit said i know who thou art thou art the christ the son of the living god and then he says flesh and blood has not revealed this to you but the spirit of my father and then he says thou art peter and upon this revelation upon this understanding i will build my ecclesia my church the body that i will now use as an extension of my possibilities i will build it the church was built it was not just born it was built built by an intelligence that is formidable i will build it in a way and a manner that the gates of hell shall not be able to prevail against it so now there are bodies see let me tell you something come my dear when the devil tries to afflict this woman for instance and stop her from having a child what is he really fighting what is barrenness about is it really just to show that a woman cannot give birth no he is fighting more bodies because more bodies means that the program of God can continue. So when a man of God heals a woman from... It's not just a miracle. It's honor to the agenda of God. That you are providing a platform for more bodies. So that the purposes of Christ would be fulfilled. A body has thou prepared for me. Without bodies, the purposes of God cannot come to pass listen there is an understanding we have in the body of christ that is very sincere but it's wrong and it's an understanding that ignores men and bodies in an attempt to exalt christ so sometimes we say it doesn't matter we're not here to see a man we're here to see god and we are right once you say that as touching and describing the sovereignty of christ you are right but when you say that as touching the program of God, you are wrong. Because God is crippled until he finds bodies. Now, bodies are so important that when Moses died, Satan also wanted to quickly use that body. So he can enter it and come back to life as Moses too. A dead body was still useful for Satan. So the Bible says that the temple of God is not our spirit. He says our body why is accident dangerous because there is a requisite level of health that must be at work in your body for your spirit to be able to stay there and for the spirit of god to be able to stay there when this body is deteriorated beyond certain limits both your spirit and the spirit of god will have to exit it we call it death are we together now so when we minister the life and the power of God, it's an attempt to bring your body to a restored dimension to allow space for the purposes of God to be birthed. A body hast thou prepared for me. There is a dimension of the revelation of Christ that is left for the church. It is part of the dominion systems of the kingdom. Now listen, there is what we call... The dominion principle in theology is the principle by which the father is ultimately glorified and is a law that an object cannot glorify itself. 
So an object will create something out of itself. The excellency of what it creates is how that object is glorified. Glorified through its image. Are we together now? The sun cannot glorify itself. It is the power of the sun as displayed through the moon that shows you how great the sun is. So the father cannot glorify himself. So he vests his glory on the son. The excellency of the son is how the father is glorified. The son cannot glorify himself. So he invests his grace upon the church in partnership with the Holy Ghost. The excellency of the church is how the son is glorified. Now the dominion of the church over creation is how the church is glorified. So the church is glorified. The son is glorified. The father is glorified. The father has been fully exalted through the victory of Christ. The contention now is the church in partnership with the Holy Spirit. So Ephesians chapter 3, you will now understand verse 10 to the intent. 3 verse 10 to the intent that now unto principalities and powers help me we're reading verse 10 3 verse 10 3 verse 10 to the intents that now can you see it now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by this new body he has formed called the church the manifold wisdom of God here's how Paul taught it in Rome verse 8 of Romans and verse 18 it says for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us then verse 19 says for the earnest expectation of creation awaits the manifestation of the sons of God it says for creation itself was subject to vanity corruption not willingly it begins to trace the corruption the bondage of corruption that came upon creation by reason of the default of Adam and says that through the church the creation will now come into that glorious liberty of the sons our territories are waiting for the revelation of the Christ through us we are the window we are the mirror of the God that they will know Listen to me, Plato State. The perspective of God that is revealed in this territory will be a reflection that the mirror called the church gives the territory. If people continue to die prematurely, for instance, in this state, there is a misrepresentation of the image of the Christ that is being communicated by the church. And you see, this is why conferences like this are powerful. Because when you keep failing in a particular dimension, chances are that you will build a theology around your failure to explain away the possibility of God on that wise. To mean God cannot move that far. So all of the multifaceted dimensions of the Christ, the balanced view. Now in arts, there's something called perspective. For those of you who did arts, perspective means... Your angle of perception based on where you are standing from is that true if I ask you to capture an image or a building from a particular perspective there are details that I don't expect to be captured because of where you are standing so plateau state is at the mercy of the balance of the saints to see the fullness of Christ the dimension that is missing in your territory is the dimension the body has refused to reflect. So if people are spiritual and poor, they are robbing God of an opportunity to see a dimension of him. If people are prosperous and then depraved spiritually, the fullness of Christ continues to cry for expression. And this is what we have come in this convergence to achieve. Let me give you very quickly three or four points that attempts to explain 
the way that the church as the body of Christ will reflect, reveal, and unveil the Christ. The dominion strategy of the church is not hidden. This is the zenith of the communication of the kingdom. The, the very gospel of the kingdom is an attempt to reveal the all-surpassing power of the Christ as revealed in and through the church. So there is a dimension of glory that can never be accorded the Father until the church reveals Christ in a way and manner that everyone within this territory will know that Jesus is Lord. Number one, is God blessing us? Hmm. The systems that bring glory to the Father. Number one, the first strategy given to the saints by which Christ can be revealed in our lives, our families, and a territory is the ministry of prayer. Write it down. Prayer is the number one strategy given. It's a platform that allows the revelation of the Christ to be seen within a territory. Please say prayer. Luke chapter 18 and verse 1. Jesus is still having his mentorship session. He's teaching the believers who would later be apostles of the Lamb. And now his discourse moves to the subject of prayer. And he's about to teach us something very interesting. Are we together? The Bible says in Luke chapter 18 and verse 1 that he spake this parable to the end that men, to the end that men ought always to pray. So prayer is not for prayer warriors. Prayer is not for men of God. Prayer is for men. You are exempted from prayer if you are not a man. But provided you are a man carrying this material body, you are mandated to pray. So the intent of the parable is that men will always pray and not things. Are we ready? Scene 1 verse 2 please. Now he's Jesus is about to teach us a lesson. Please, let's hurry up. There was in a city a judge. Everybody say a judge. And the Bible describes this judge. May you never be in a court where you have this kind of judge in Jesus' name. That a judge that does not fear God, nor regard man, you can't bribe him. You can't say you are my relative. And... The spirit of God can almost not speak to him because he doesn't have regard for God. So this is the judge we have to deal with. Sin 2 verse 3. The Bible now tells us that there was a widow. Who is a widow? One whose system of defense from this scripture has been taken away. A woman who is vulnerable. Her cover has been taken from her. Now he's teaching on prayer. He wants to show us the power of prayer. In revealing the Christ within a territory. And so he's contrasting. A man who does not fear God. And a frail widow. And the widow the Bible says. Continue to go to the judge and say. Avenge me my adversary. Next verse says for a while. That means there is a time component to prayer. For a while. That unjust judge. Would not pay attention to her. But then he said within himself, though I do not fear God, nor regard man. Next verse. He said that, um, where are we? Please go back to verse 5. Because this woman troubled me. Other versions say because of her importunity, her persistence, her fortitude to remain. She altered the judgment of a man. God could not advise him. Men could not advise him, but prayer still changed his will. This is the power of prayer here. He's teaching us how to pray. That means a territory that cannot pray cannot see God. There are possibilities that cannot be revealed within a territory corporately when men do not pray. He spake a parable encouraging a people that in their quest to see Christ revealed, men will ought always to pray. 
A family that does not pray will not see the revelation of the Christ. A businessman that does not pray will keep seeing possibilities that will never become his experience. Because the technology of manifestation is that everything is first real in the realm of the spirit and then it is transported through prayer. The realm of the spirit is a compendium of possibilities with no date attached to them. It takes prayer to attach time and create their manifestation. So men can pray. Samaria was under siege until a prophet came and with one decree by this time tomorrow. He was not revealing what would have happened anyway. He made it happen through the power of decrees. Are we together now? Spirit of prayer. Men and women, you do not know how cheap life can be until you master the art of praying with understanding. Not crash prayer that is born out of selfishness. Not prayer that is full of wise sayings. Oh God, is this how my life will be? That's not prayer. Are we together now? Yes. The Bible says in James chapter 5, Apostle James is teaching us something on prayer. And then he starts from verse 13. He says, is any man afflicted? So he's talking about affliction. He says, if that man is afflicted, let him pray. Not let him discuss with neighbors and relatives that will not have the power to solve his problem. It's amazing that God is the last person we consult. We tell people things about our lives that have no power to help us. They end up multiplying the pain. When we are fully disappointed, then we move to God as a last resort and say, God, are you there? Men ought always to pray. Just are we together? We must pray. Prayer is not for men of God. Prayer is for men. Prayer is for men. We must pray. You know, sometimes believers forget that this is Africa. We have to be honest to admit it. Let me tell you the truth. The, the operation of witchcraft and the operation of powers that be is something that we'll be joking if we try to ignore. It takes prayer to dislodge the powers of the enemy. It takes prayer to select and insist that your portion be manifested. There is nothing that is laid anywhere for you by default. It's prayer that insists on your allocation. Please understand this. The Bible tells us, please go to verse 16. Still teaching on prayer. Confess your faults to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. Then it says the effectual. Now he's telling you the kind of prayer that works. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Are we together now? And then verse 17 now personifies an entity. Now it's amazing how scripture works. Every time God is communicating a thought, he usually will pick a, an individual that personifies that thought. In this case, he's using Elijah. That Elijah was a man who was subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly. Now he's talking about territorial dominion. One man prays over the city of Jos, Plateau State, that there be no rain. Don't you think there were other prayer warriors who prayed against him? There had to be other people who said, no, forget about that nonsense. See, let me tell you, all men are not the same. This is a very difficult revelation to get, but just try to understand what I'm saying. We are equal in Christ. The same Lord is rich unto all. But our understanding alongside the election of grace and our personal sacrifices have separated us into cadres of possibilities. A man can be talking and saying something and another man's covenant can veto what you are saying. 
because of an agreement you have with God and a vow he has sworn with his name on your behalf. Elijah, Elijah secured a space where God branded his dealings with that man. If you were in Elijah's city, whatever you were praying was nonsense. It was a business between him and God for three and a half years. There were 7,000 other prophets who were being mentored. One of them should have been compassionate enough to say, Oh God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, send rain. And God said, Ah, it doesn't work that way. A man who knows how to do business with me has closed the heavens. A man, not a spirit. There were people who believed in God in the days of Elisha in Samaria. The widows, the Bible says women were eating their children. Don't you think the women would have prayed before resorting to the option of eating their children? And yet Samaria did not change. But one man, there are men, truly there are men that God honors. They will speak over your life and shift your climate like day and night. Let me speak over someone tonight. In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, I declare that what must shift this night, let it shift over your life. Please sit down. Prayer. When men can pray, they can shift territories. They can shift climates. There's kidnapping going on in Joss. When I came into this city, that was the first information I got to hear. Now, it's everywhere. But I got to hear that this people, they just pick people like chickens. You are moving around and they pick and call an evil amount. And tell you, bring 100 million. Bring, if you have 100 million spare money, will, will you be the way you are? And then an evil person who wants to shortchange there are people who can pray and the earth by itself will look for them. The police can only do so much. Do you not know that the stars fought for Deborah? Have you learned how to engage the elements of the supernatural to command victory for the saints? Knowest thou the ordinances of heaven, he says, and canst thou establish their dominion upon the earth thereof? Let me declare that any assassin that comes near your house, a day before it, the earth will open and swallow them. Listen, prayer changes things. So, some things remain in our life because you are not serious enough to pray. Not prayer that you are browsing while you are praying. That's not prayer. Not prayer that you are doing this thing and what they do. All these things you do with your phone. That's not prayer. Serious prayer that you off your phone. Off your phone and shut the door. Hezekiah was given an evil report by a genuine prophet. Chapter 38 of Isaiah. He told him, hey, spark up your house, oh king. You will not survive this sickness. He said, you are a true prophet, but go. I know how to do business with God. And he shut the door and said, Lord, remember. Remember. And God sent the prophet. He said, I, I don't know what you did with God, but he sent me back to you to say, I've changed my mind. The Bible says, I am the Lord. I change it not. But prayer will compel him to change his mind. Hear me? There is no verdict that is absolute. It's your prayerlessness that stamps it. Did you hear what I said? There is no verdict. You wake up from a dream and you see your funeral. You wake up from a dream and see a spirit. I killed your father. I killed your mother. You say nonsense. You get up and, and pray a kind of prayer. See, no matter how mad a man is, he doesn't enter fire by mistake. A madman can pick your thing. He can enter the road. But he's not stupid enough to stand in the midst of fire. The Bible says he makes his angels winds. And his ministers flames of fire. Whatever has killed your prayer life this night. In the name of Jesus. Fresh fire upon your altar. Prayer. 
you pay a school fees of over 500,000 for your child and he returns with a result second to the last. That's not the issue of flogging. You lock the door. That's an evil report. There were spies that came. I mean, you can't waste my money that way. Lay your hands on that child's head and pray every devil out of that head. You don't like what I'm saying? Please believe what I'm saying. You must pray. Nobody is coming around your business. You've spent money on publicity. You've spent money buying products. You are eating your products by yourself. Don't you know everything is alive? Both the products and your customers are living things. You can connect them through prayer. You will never be the same. You've touched his grace. Your life will change. You will never be the same. You've touched his grace. Your life must change. Please sit down. Let's hurry up. So number one, the first platform that allows the church to reveal Christ is prayer. Number two, are we together? The second dominion system allocated for the revelation of the life and the power of Christ by the church is called productivity. Please write it down. This is very important. Productivity. There is a dimension of the revelation of the life, the power and the grace of the Christ. That is only manifested through the instrument of productivity. When God made man, Adam, he gave him the blessing. And he said it this way, be fruitful. Multiply, he said. Replenish, subdue, have dominion. Productivity is very important. When believers do not make their impact known, and by extension, the impact of Christ known by their level of productivity to the sociological environment, then Christ will not be revealed. More than just praying in tongues in church, more than just falling under the anointing, we must translate the spiritual possibilities we have received to become value systems and products and services that are needed and useful within the context of a civilization. That is the birthing and the revelation of glory. The church will remain a place that looks like a nuisance to society until they can see the blessings of our praying in tongues, the blessings of our word study. Isn't it amazing that we are full of activities from week in and week out? And it's amazing that those who bring value to the social economy of a territory are seldom Christians. The first manifestation of the Holy Spirit is not as a healer, it's as the spirit of creativity. Bringing light out of darkness to who are the who, confusion and chaos, and the spirit of God hovered around the face of the deep, and God said, Light. And he saw that it was good. The first good thing recorded in scripture came on account of light. Are we together? This is very important. The Bible says the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory as of the begotten, full of grace and truth. You only behold what is being manifested. We must trust God for grace. We must trust God for grace. We should see believers, the most blessed people, not from a carnal standpoint, the most productive people in society should be those who are of the church. It is proof of the advantage and the value. Nobody can just come and shut a church because you will show how the people in that church are contributing to the GDP of a territory. We are not just talkatives. No. Hallelujah. The definition of darkness is a territory without us. 
We culture the moral values. We culture the advancement that you shut the church for 24 hours. A territory should go into disarray. If a territory is still normal when the church is shut, it's proof we are not doing anything. Productivity. There is a dimension of competence and excellence that must come from the church. You have a restaurant as a Christian. That's not, you, you should not be the one who opens by 12 in the afternoon. And closes by 5 in the evening. And believe you will lead the field. It won't work that way. We must be productive. I cast the spirit of laziness. In the name of Jesus. Let me say this respectfully so. And let me admit to you. Mediocrity and low level of productivity. Is a plague that is upon us the middle belt. Now I, I must say this. This is an uncomfortable truth. But it's true. We must trust God for grace. For some reason, it looks like our cultural context has found its way to make mediocrity and laziness comfortable. Consoled by the fact that vanity upon vanity, all is vanity. We must wake up. Otherwise, there will rise another Pharaoh who does not know Joseph. And the sons of the kingdom will be bent into servitude. Are we together? Laziness is one thing that both God and Satan agree that is useless. Whether you serve God or serve Satan, in any case, you cannot be lazy. So we must trust God for grace to wake up. Be productive. Are we together? Don't sell fake things, inferior things. Christians are the ones who cheat people the most. It's wrong. It should not be so. I'm praying tongues and cheat people. You, you give people things that are outdated. And not, no, 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 no. Maintain a standard of quality. The spirit of God came upon Bezalel. And it brought forth creativity. Productivity is very, very powerful. Are we still together? Hallelujah. I found a scripture that I will read for you. And it blessed me so much. First Kings chapter 7. Please let's hurry up so we maximize time. 1 Kings chapter 7. I'll read from verse 13 and 14. Now, look up please. This is the building of Solomon's temple. Let me show you the power of productivity and the power of competence. And King Solomon sent and fetched Hiram out of Tyre. Tyre was the business hub of the then world. Next verse. The Bible says this Hiram was the son of a widow of the tribe of Naphtali. He said, and his father was a man of Tyre, a worker in brass. And he was what? Filled with wisdom and understanding and cunning to work all works in brass. And he came to King Solomon and wrought all his work. The Bible starts by telling us his background. A widow's son. No advantage, but his competence grew him to a point where his domain was the palace. When you serve kings, you will eat with kings. You are not productive until kings call you. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1. It says, arise, shine, for your light is come and the glory of God is risen upon you. I like to quote it from Amplified. It says, arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you. It says, rise to a new light. For darkness shall cover the earth, the Bible says, and gross darkness the people. Then it says, but upon you the glory of the Lord shall arise. Verse 3 says, Gentiles. Gentiles will come. There is a level of light that when you have, you don't look for people again. You become so compelling they will give every excuse to be with you. Gentiles will come to your light and they are kings to the brightness of your rising. I was very blessed when the daughter of the man of God, you know, that little girl, and you can see the kinds of songs that she's singing. Imagine that this lady becomes consistent in the music ministry. By the time she's 20, she would be a global voice. 
And then people will come and say they are lucky. That's always what we say when we see competent people. Who is this that came from nowhere? Let me tell you, nobody comes out of nowhere. When David is, when David is in the cave of Adullam, you may not see him, but he is there. When David is at the backside killing lions and bears, you may not be there to capture it, but he is there having his track record. There is always a day in every man's life called the season of appearing. Until then you stay. Until then you walk. I'm encouraging some of us who are in ministry. Leave this thing of trying to look for open doors. Doors are not closed. It is your door that is closed. And it was closed by God to keep you in training. When the season comes, the doors open. You are in business, sit down. Promise yourself that you will never stand before your destiny helpers and have them ignore you. You will be too competent to be ignored. If you have to call the attention of men to your competence, it's proof you are not good enough. Your light should be so bright, it should be impossible to be ignored. Number three, can we hurry up? The third platform. Now, please, lend me the next 10 minutes of your attention, please, inside and outside. I want you to listen very, very carefully. I'm taking out time to preach because this is my own state. I'm pouring my heart into this thing because permit my bias. I know there are people following from around, but please, let me just do this thing. I love my state. This is plateau. I mean, <laughs> praise the Lord. I'm sure somebody will kill chicken and give me for this. This wonderful, I'm joking, I'm joking. The third platform, please, I want you, anything that distracts you now is a spirit. Just listen to what I'm about to tell you because what I'm about to reveal is a serious issue. The third platform that allows believers to manifest the power, the life of the kingdom and reveal the Christ is called wealth. Write it down. Don't assume you know what I'm talking about. Just write it and listen to me. Wealth. This subject has been persecuted greatly. Either because of ignorance or because of the approach, especially around the Pentecostal and the charismatic circles. There has been the, the communications of wealth from a carnal and a fleshly standpoint. That, that is all about just massaging the lust of people. Are we together now? And so at the end of it, you do not have people who are kingdom driven. Their approach is simply a, a trying to create resources just to feed the flesh. Please, this is not what we are talking about here. You will never find access to the corridors of power within any sociological space if you ignore the reality of the abundance of the kingdom. Believers wake up. The days that we live in. We require people who love God. And are strategic enough. The subject of wealth is not about prosperity. The subject of wealth is a time redemption strategy. We are mandated to redeem time. And one of the ways we redeem time. Is to sustain the economic wherewithal. To stop wasting time. It takes time to know God. It takes time to serve God. It takes time to build the children to love God. And if we spend our time looking for money, we will be there looking for money while the devil looks for our children. We'll be there looking for money while the devil destroys our generation. Respectfully speaking, this is what is happening in the Western world. Satan patiently grew with their children. Knowing that their fathers and their grandfathers would never bow to Baal, Satan left them. And went to meet the now presidents of nations while they were 8, 10, 11. And patiently grew with that generation. Now there is a generation that does not serve the God of their fathers. We rebuke this over Joss in the name of Jesus. Look at me. Not being wealthy is wickedness. Just be patient. I will explain to you. It's, it's not just about no car, no house. When you understand the agenda of the kingdom, you understand the world of men, you understand systems of dominion and government, you will know that being poor 
is a misdeed to the revelation of the Christ. Two scriptures. Number one, Proverbs chapter 22. We'll read verse 2 and then we'll go to verse 7. I believe that in this conference there are financial apostles in the name of Jesus that God is going to be raising. Not people who serve bell, not people who go around making noise. People who understand the kingdom assignment that is tied to the supplies of the spirit. Proverbs 22 and verse 7. Please read with me. Ready? Read. Want to read? The rich and the poor meet together. The Lord is the maker of them all. Very interesting scripture. The Bible never said God made them rich or made them poor. God made men. They separated him themselves to become rich and poor. Now here's the scary verse. Verse 7. One, two, read. Just. One more time, please. Keep this scripture here. Joss, Nigeria, Africa. This will be the key to our dominion or the key to our slavery. The Bible says it is a law in the world of men that the rich will always rule over the poor and that whoever is on the side of the borrower must become slave to the lender. This is a statement that has no bias and no sentiment attached to it. That means when Satan wants people to become slaves, he doesn't make them slaves by making them slaves. He makes them slaves by making them borrowers. Please listen. Listen. This is a very powerful scripture. The rich unbeliever will rule over the poor prayer warrior. The rich anything will rule over the poor. There are people whose properties have been collected by wicked people and because they do not have the economic stability to defend their cause, they lost things. I made up my mind as a minister of the gospel that I will never raise a people who are just anointed and spiritual. I believe in influence. I believe in the power of economy and supplies in kingdom advance. I'm friends to many people. I don't fight politicians. I don't fight. You touch me, both God and men will deal with you. That's a powerful revelation because in this world, there is no such thing as justice truly. You create your own. Let me, let me not get into trouble. But I want you to believe this and believe it truly. You need God and you need men. Do not fight influence. Don't see wealthy people and just bless them and as everybody is a thief, wicked people. No, there are people who have been blessed through the dignity of kingdom integrity and you will need them. The body of Jesus is hanging on a tree. No prayer warrior could bring it down. It took a man of wealth called Joseph of Arimathea to use his influence with Caesar to bring that body down. Wealth played a role in your salvation. The tomb that Jesus was buried was not for government. It was for Joseph of Arimathea. Are you getting what I'm saying now? There are people, there are children today who have no business going to useless schools. But that's what the, the money their parents had could afford. Are we together? You go to a school where the child does not even know what he's learning. They discuss what they are learning with the teacher and the teacher is not sure. And the student is correcting the teacher and they are arguing and that ends the lecture. This is why you see someone become an adult and is unnecessarily dull. It's not that they are dull. I mean, what, that's, that's the product of the background. That you can go to a school where you are sure that they are not only giving your child secular education but the values of the kingdom. A school where you have night vigil before resumption. Part of the requirements is not masters and PhDs, your spiritual stand. 
and the proprietor has the economic wherewithal to outsource spiritual people. The name of Jesus is heavy. It takes resources to lift it. Please understand this. There are many men of God today who cannot pray well because of economic vicissitudes. The pastor wants to pray and is aware that they need to buy a new generator. Where will he get five million to get a mechano generator? And he goes to pray, well intentioned, and he's there for three hours, strolling around. Oh God, you called me. I'm sure of this. You see, look, at, look at the amount of time that is being wasted in that discussion. Whereas he would have been praying for something more productive. What is wrong with God raising people to say, Pastor, please save yourself this trouble. We will commit ourselves to helping you while you commit yourself to the ministry of the word and prayer. Please don't say it does not matter. There are members who cannot listen to a teaching because their rent is due. And while they are sitting there, the landlord is at the other side and is looking at them. Are we together? And, and we say it does not matter. But what, what, what do you mean it does not matter? Of course it matters. Listen. Hunger will always take Israel to Egypt. The only reason why Israel, God's covenant people, will go into Egypt is hunger. Genesis 42 verse 1 and 2. Don't forget this scripture for as long as you live. Please give it to us very quickly. Genesis chapter 42. Please look up. It's projected. Let's just walk with time. Now when Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt... There was corn, but the problem is the location, Egypt. He said unto his sons, why do ye look upon one another? Verse 2. He said, behold, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. Get you down tether and buy for us from thence that we may live. Even a prophet would die when there is no corn. A prophet sends his future to the place of bondage. Because he needs corn. There are marriages that should not have happened. Is this search for corn that created those ungodly alliances? There are people like Jonah. They know where God sent them to. But because they need to stay where there is corn. They have gone out of the will of God. There are people today who should not have died. Cheap medical attention just for next to nothing. And they died like chickens. And we say, how can I allow Sharia? Remember, I'm speaking from a standpoint of love. I will never forget the day that our precious Josmaine Market was burned to ashes. As it went down, the economy of many went down. Even till today. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising in this city. There's an army rising up. They will break every chain, break every chain, break every. Listen to me. I say it by the Spirit. There will be people who will rise from this city. In the Spirit and the power of Nehemiah. And they will rebuild. They will rebuild the economic destiny and heritage of this city. It is true. Some of them are politicians. Some of them are bankers. Some of them are men of God. But an agency they cannot explain. They will come under the influence of it. And there will be a clarion call. The sons and daughters of the land. Both the ones who are within and afar off. There will be a convergence. And they will come and rebuild the plateau again. To become God's own state. Please sit down. I hear the chains 
only. Hallelujah. We need resources. There are many people here who are in health conditions that have nothing to do with sickness. We think about money so much we become sick. Are we together? We have to be very honest about this. While we sat down and we were watching the video of the medical outreach, it took resources, not just desire. It took resources to make this happen. Have you been before someone and said, ah yeah, I wish I had money. You have the heart. So Satan will not allow the resources to enter your hand because he knows. We need an apostolic move of financial empowerment. Men and women with the paradigm of the kingdom. Not just people carrying money and, and making noise. And I'm not, we're not just talking of thieves and crooks. No, we're talking of wealth with the dignity of kingdom integrity. Men and women with financial intelligence and anointing on it. Who will invade the socio-economic space of this city and bring this city to its sabbath it will happen and it will happen by the spirit a day will come where the sound that was heard the bible the bible talks about the the sound of of languishing and the sound of pain no more being heard within a city the only shout that will be heard in the plateau is the shout of joy and victory. The shout of the king. A day will come when on a weekday you will tell your family nobody is going anywhere today. We are worshipping the Lord. You have the resources to pay for your excuse. Hallelujah. Yes. All this unless one of my dear people in the ministry would say that prosperity will reduce your prayer points and increase your prayer life. It's amazing. It's amazing the content of our prayer points. You go to pray for six hours. I agree, but what were you saying? The real prayer was 30 minutes out of the six hours. I believe in empowerment. I have seen the value and the benefit. When wealth comes into the hand of one who loves Jesus and understands the purposes of the kingdom, it's a weapon of mass destruction in the camp of the enemy. Hallelujah. The Bible says, what shall it profit a man? Look up now. I have to say this to round this up. What shall it profit a man? So he's speaking prophet and he's speaking men. What shall it profit a man if he gains, that's business, gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Many of you have followed my teachings and you've heard me say it again and again. The battle for wealth is the battle for your soul. A realm will come where you don't use money again. You use your soul to pay for things. Now, the economy of Babylon is that you increase as your soul decreases. You can know you are fraternizing with Babylon because the higher your wealth increases, the more your spiritual life goes down. The one thing Satan will not allow is for you to prosper even as your soul prospers. That one is impossible. That the wealthier you are becoming, the more yielded you are. No way. Satan will not allow it. So there will always be a deal bow to me and I will give you the wealth of the cosmos. But there is a generation of people who will not bow to bear. And yet they will access the resources. I hope you know that when I talk of kingdom wealth, I'm not talking of money to eat and money to build a house. If all you have is a car and your small estate, you are not wealthy. You are wealthy only when no amount invested in the kingdom becomes an inconvenience to you. 
that you are so wealthy that no financial demand becomes an inconvenience to you. We're not talking of some selfish, individualistic, small car, one estate. This, you are poor. If all you have is money, you are poor. We're talking of a heritage of advancing the cause of the kingdom. I hear the chains only. Can I give us the last one as we pray? Break every chain. Remember Haggai chapter 1 and verse 8. It was a prophecy that prophet Haggai brought. I just felt to just add this. Haggai. It's amazing that those who spoke about this prosperity were prophets. Not business people. Haggai 1 verse 8. Go up the mountain. Look up please. He said bring wood. You get wood in the forest. Not the mountain. So when he says to go up the mountain and bring wood, he's speaking about a mystery. Enter the systems, the seven mountains of the cosmos, the mind control platforms. Go there and through creativity and value, bring forth the resources and then build my house with it. You don't get wood from the mountain, you get wood from forest. Now he's saying this kind of wood that will be used to build the house of God. Don't go to the forest. Go up the mountain. The same mountain that the Bible says the mountain of the Lord's house will be above it. He's talking of the strata of human activities. Enter the systems and through your value exchange it for the resources that you can bring to the house of God. And build him a house. That he would be glorified there. Please hate poverty. Not just by shouting it around. But by sitting down to say Lord. If I have suffered let my child not go through it. There are people who sat down worrying till they died. There are people who were driving. And they did not know when a tree was in front of them. They were thinking and died. Do you not know poverty is a sword? It can kill. There are many books today that have been written. And God told the writers that the books will go to the ends of the earth. It has not gone out of their villages. Because of resources. There are many foundations, some in this place, that would have been given wings if there was the wherewithal, economically speaking. Hmm. Let hope, let it rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. That's what is happening to the plateau from this conference. Let hope, let it rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. Number four. The last system by which we reveal Christ. And we manifest his glory within a territory. It's called the supernatural. Please pay attention. Just a few minutes and we're done. I gave us four keys. By which the church reveals Christ. Territorially speaking. Number one. I said. That it is a ministry of prayer. Number two. Productivity. Number three. Wealth. The availability of resources. That give us the leverage to speak the purposes of God. And then number four. The supernatural. This I want you to listen. This is very, very important. Psalm 92 verse 10. Can you pray one minute while you are turning to that scripture? Hmm.
but my horn shall thou exalt a horn is a symbol of authority it says my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn look at me the horn of a unicorn never touches the ground even when his head is in the ground the horn is always on top you shall anoint me in the similitude of a unicorn and it says i shall be anointed with fresh oil to anoint means to ordain into a possibility the anointing is an ordination it's more than a smearing with oil an ordination an initiation into a realm of spiritual possibilities please look at me christ is only glorified when the works of christ are done if it is the lord's doing then it must be marvelous in our eyes you don't clap for me for walking it is human to walk i don't deserve a round of applause for walking because all men walk but when a man flies that is a dimension that is not affordable in the economy of men you must have outsourced an agency and an intelligence that is higher than that which is given to men there is a dimension of the wisdom the power the glory of god that must be revealed in this age here and now principalities and powers brought to their knees an effulgence of the life the glory of jesus the first miracle of jesus was performed in the city of cana of galilee it was the turning of water to wine it says this beginning of miracles did jesus in the presence of his disciples and he manifested his glory the glory of god is the greek word doxa the hebrew word is kabod the weightiness of a man the full essence the multifaceted dimensions of that man being revealed is called his glory please hear me there is a dimension of the glory and the power of god more than creativity more than intelligence more than value more than a socioeconomic advantage we must introduce the spiritual advantage that the believers have we are not ordinary people it's not a preacher's note it's reality Every territory has forces that be. The Bible lets us know that there are forces that reside within the heavenlies that manipulate the activities of men. Please look at me. Men are only puppets to the spirits that manipulate them. If your destiny helper refuses to come and help you, he's only a puppet to an influence that is strengthened by an altar. That is created by a covenant there is an advantage that can be outsourced through intelligence that can release your helpers to you please listen to me the realm of the spirit controls this realm find a way of indoctrinating yourself to believe this truth nothing just happens can you say that with me please nothing your car didn't just get missing no, your son didn't just turn into an arm robber. Your daughter didn't just turn into a prostitute. Your church didn't just pack up. No, tragedies are programmed. Please listen to me. Tragedies are programmed. The Bible takes us to the book of Job. Now, theologically speaking, Job is a very interesting book. The author of Job is still a contention. And where it really lies, as far as the chronological arrangement of scripture, is still a debate today. It is believed that it's still sandwiched somewhere between Genesis 1 and the last chapter. But the Bible, whoever is the writer of Job, 
had the privilege to communicate to us from the standpoint of one who was seeing from the realm of the spirit and then the standpoint of one who was a man. And the Bible starts by telling us that there was a man called Job. And then he tells us the spiritual credentials of such a man. That he was a man that feared God and eschewed evil. Are we together? Who would offer sacrifices in advance for his children. This man had children and he had his estate. He was the wealthiest man in the east. Then once upon a time, the Bible says a solemn assembly was called in the heavenlies. And Satan was part of that delegation. And he came and the Lord said, Hast thou considered my servant Job? Satan began to speak. It was from that scripture we see that Satan was testifying that it's possible that a man can be so fortified he will come and not be able to access him. Satan is confessing before God that Job was so fortified spiritually. I came, but I could not penetrate him. That scene changes. And the next thing we see is a plethora of catastrophe coming upon a man. In one day, he loses his estates, loses his children. The only thing he had was his health and his wife. Then we see that his health starts deteriorating. The hospital will call it high blood pressure. And they are right based on what the machine and education said. But the realm of the spirit says it is a programming the conclusion of a discourse. Are we together now? What happened that 2019 was such a year of suffering and hardship for me? Maybe it's how Nigeria is. No, sir. It's a programming. The realm of the spirit, Hebrews 11, gives us a mystery in verse 3 that everything that appears is a child that the mother that holds that pregnancy is called the realm of the spirit. Nothing just appears until it is birthed. What you call creation in this realm is simply transportation from the realm of the spirit to this realm. So when a man is favored, it did not just happen. Realities were manipulated and finished from the realm of the spirit. My Bible says from the foundations of the earth, the lamb was slain, finished. It's amazing how many things have been finished. The messianic prophecy Isaiah 61 says the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he hath ordained or anointed me to preach glad tidings to the meek. The Bible says he hath sent me to bind up the broken hearted. Now watch this. To proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of prison. If I look at you and I say you are in prison, will you agree? Won't you ask me to go to the hospital? You are alive. You are free, but you are bound. It's the years of your life that will show you you are bound. You are, the only thing increasing in your life is your age. But nothing else is growing. It's proof that you are bound. The Bible says there is an engracing that can open that door. Are we together? There are families where the women feed the men. If you like travel to America, you will sit there for 10 years and return back to look like yesterday. There are people who have served in our region, occupied offices of honor, but in old age have been reduced to look like yesterday. It's a spirit. I hope you're not taking what I'm saying personal because it's true. There are people who win but never finish. They never finish. I was told of a lady who collapsed while they were about to join them. The man wanted to faint. He had suffered for many years, lobbying for approval for his wife. This guy is now dressed with his necktie and just to say, I do, the lady collapses. They said it was a health condition. Well, I'm telling you that the realm of the spirit is alive. There is a reason why people run away from you. When you are in trouble, sicknesses come. When the money finishes, it just goes like that. Knowest thou the ordinances of heaven? And canst thou establish the dominion thereof? Favor is a spirit. It can come and call its kind to you. Hardship is a spirit. 
it can rest on you and drive every good thing from you. Hardship as a spirit knows when an alert enters your account and it will not rest till you suffer. That's why it looks like everybody is watching you. It's just when the arrears comes that your father becomes sick, your mother becomes sick, your elder brother becomes sick, then your car will hit a mopole. Are you seeing those kinds of things? They will just say, come out and sit on the ground first. You see, don't, don't, the Bible said, thou shalt not be afraid of the arrows that fly. Don't, don't you read it in your, it's in your Bible. Job said, thou shalt be delivered from five things. Yes, six things. One of it is the scourging tongues of men. That men can send words like an arrow and program a climate of disfavor upon a man. Are we together? Very beautiful lady. But the only person who will say you are good looking is a madman. Is that a testimony? This is how these spirits work. To finish your PhD and the only job for you is to manage in a security outfit somewhere. As a gate man. Well, it's better than nothing. Things must change this night. Oh. Please give me a few minutes because God wants to reorder things in our lives. Hallelujah. It looks like every evil looks for you. Every evil looks for you. Trails you like a guided missile until it finds you. When they are looking for an armed robber, they look at your face and say, wait here. You say me, I'm a pastor's child. They say, still wait here. Why must it be my face? You see how these spirits work? Already the embarrassment of being associated with theft. Even if they say go, that suspicion is already an indictment on your reputation. Ah, but tonight, someone shout no way. Shout it again, say no way. The Bible says you shall be called Beulah and Hephzibah. A city, the, the fragrance. He said, my, the smell of my son is like a field that the Lord has blessed. The day you are tired of your situation and you stop looking at life just from an academic standpoint, just from a sociological standpoint, the day you approach life from a spiritual standpoint, that's the day your liberty starts. Knowest thou the ordinances of heaven? You have to sit tonight. We have a few minutes. But you have to be angry. Lord, why is my life like this? I came here at Global Flames. There is a dimension of the Christ that is not revealed in and through my life. Something must change in my life. It takes that kind of anger. It's a war to them who are at ease in Zion. Hear me? Every challenge is at the mercy of the anointing that confronts it. The anointing is not generic. The anointing works like money. One thousand can give you breakfast, but it cannot give you a car. If it's a car you are looking for, you will need more of that amount. Oh, oh, oh. Your lifting has come. Oh, oh, oh. Your lifting has come. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Please sit down. Give me two minutes. We are going to pray. Please.
let me have four or five gentlemen. I want to show you something. Come. It's not invitation. Just. <laughs> Please come. Please watch my illustration and never forget it. Some of you stand here. Just stand facing me. Now watch this. Everyone, please look at this. I want to show you a scripture that will bless you. The Bible says, Paul was teaching. And this is what he said. Paul said, and God is able to make all grace. Everybody say, all grace. Grace is the generic name given to every possibility that can be given to man only routed through the office of the Christ. It's called grace. It's not just limited to its redemptive potential. The generic name for every possibility that comes from the Christ to man is called grace. Anointing is grace. Favor is grace. Speed is grace. Are we together? So when the Bible says all grace, that means every possibility i call them possibilities you may call them results every result in this kingdom please look up there is a grace dimension that is responsible for it are we together now speed in this kingdom is governed by a grace when you find the grace that controls speed look up please some of you who know cars very well how many of you know that there are fuses and ICs in cars that control certain things? When a light goes down, usually you would go and check what fuse or what IC and sometimes you see it burnt. You buy a new one and fix and the result shows it's corrected. Now for every physical outcome, there is a grace. Please understand what I teach you. So the possibilities that are in men is not just dependent on the love of Christ. Is dependent on the graces they have accessed. You can know the grace on a man by the results that he commands. And graces are in levels and in dimensions. You can have a higher level of the same grace. For instance, the healing grace. You can have different levels of the same grace. And then you can have dimensions of grace. Watch this. I can have a grace for healing and not have a grace for favor watch this my physical result i will always be whole and healthy and when i pray for you even when you fall even if i pray for prosperity what will come on you is the healing grace because that's what i have just because you fell you will start seeing results in the healing area but not the because i do not have it watch this I can be a healing evangelist and yet even my church members on my birthday they will forget. It's not forgetfulness. It's the result of absence of that grace. That's how the absence of it works. That you are not remembered because there is a book of remembrance in the spirit. I hope you know that. The book of Esther teaches us that there is a book of remembrance where the deeds of men are archived and chronicled and that it can be opened and visited. So whatever makes men forget you is not their brain. Is that the grace to remind them is not on you. Please understand what I'm sharing with you. Was it not an anointing that came upon the wine presser and said, King, I remember this day. Now I have a grace for healing and then I come for a conference like this and although I'm anointed, so we think, but my results show that there is a dimension of Christ that cannot be revealed in me. That means if I study this preacher, I cannot see that God gives men favor. I can't see Christ revealed as the one who brings favor because that dimension is not captured in his experience. And it's dangerous because if this man remains that lopsided, he will build a theology a limitation to mean God cannot flow this way. Are we together? Now watch this. Come. This is the grace for favor. Have you seen? I was always anointed. But another dimension of grace has been added. You will see it in my physical results. My neighbor who has been with me for five years. And never gave me a chicken. Although he has poultry. Will suddenly remember me after service. It's not about chicken. 
the physical realm is answering to something that is there watch this an uncle who forgot you suddenly says i don't something told me no something told me this is the grace i'm showing you how it works but even that is not enough because there is a grace for influence when you don't have that grace you are favored but you will still be small there is a grace that lifts you above your equals because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness therefore god even thy god hath anointed you with an oil of gladness that sets you above your equals now i come for a meeting like this come now this is the grace for influence watch this are you seeing as a pastor as you are fishing this grace is through hunger and faith the results are showing in your life now you can sit in pride forever and not carry these graces the graces are for the taking but there are rules impartation is one of them and impartation does not flow from colleague to colleague it answers to honor genuine honor now watch this assuming I want to pray for a politician and I don't have a grace for influence. I can lay my hands on him and say in the name of Jesus, I speak to you. Excel politically. He can fall and roll. Let me tell you the truth in the name of honesty. He didn't get anything. He will only be healthy. If you poison him, it will not work because that's the grace I carry and that's what came on him. But as far as breaking through the spiritual holes of the governmental systems i don't have the grace for it but when that grace is here you can turn your usher into a governor see there is a grace that makes men i will lift up my eyes onto the hills from whence cometh my help he said my help cometh from the lord the maker he doesn't only make the heavens and the earth he makes men follow me and i will make you when you carry the maker's grace you don't invite millionaires you don't invite men of god you make people are we together now you can have all these things and still be foolish because come the spirit of wisdom remember this is one of the grandest operations of the spirit doth not wisdom cry he said by me kings reign and princes decree justice with me are riches wealth and honor yet durable riches and righteousness wisdom this was the spirit that was upon the father when they were founding the earth the wisdom of god you find out you are doing very well except that your decisions continue to betray your knowledge of God and then through impartation now notice hold my hands guys notice are you seeing how heavy you are becoming the realm of the spirit this is what it means the weightiness of a man is the graces upon you that make you heavy it is because of this weight that the anointing breaks the yoke there is a yoke but the weightiness, you are now outsourcing these graces. Please watch this. Now, everyone is exposed to the same situation in life. Your bailout is the graces you are carrying. You can be in just and the city will not open for you. But someone will come with this battalion of graces. And the two lift gates of the city open. Not just because you are anointed. You are a carrier of these graces. Listen, this is what defines our possibilities in this kingdom. Every challenge is relative to the graces you carry. And tonight, let me tell you, one of the things that must come upon you is a duplication of these graces. Let's go. Watch this. Sir, Saul, the son of Kish, the father's donkey is missing. And now they go searching for the donkey. 
and after three days they couldn't find the donkey you know they would have returned back and written a book and said donkeys cannot be restored except that one advised them and said let us go to a man there is a man every grace comes from God through men to men please understand what I share with you this will be a glorious way of finishing 2019 the fire you receive from this conference by the end of January 2020 you've recovered 10 years in one I'm not motivating you no one day go better is nonsense that's why sayings time does not change things time only reveals it takes you obtaining the requisite level of intelligence and the grace dimension that your results depend upon this is what changes your life watch this let me share with you a little story we're rounding up years ago I went to a bank to collect loan. Now, bankers, I love you with all my heart. In the name of Jesus. May you go from glory to glory. Now, watch this. In all fairness, after wasting my time, traveled to Lagos, came back. I won't tell you how much. The man now insulted me and said, you think we just dole out money like that? When he made those statements, I stood and I looked at him. And I knew that it was not his fault because what is on you is what controls what is around you and I shook him I said no problem a few years later I'm in the office of the group general manager of that bank and I'm sitting down and we're talking and he said apostle it's an honor for you to be seated here I said sir let me tell you a little story some years ago I met one of your staff now the bank is closed and I said, this is what he did. And we're laughing. He said, Apostle, you are bigger than that. And I said, is it not because God helped me? There are doors that your yesterday's grace could not open. But watch to see what comes upon you tonight. You will not even have to knock. The Bible says, as Peter was being led by the angel, the doors were being opened on their own. There are graces that can open doors. He has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. Please be patient with me. We're rounding up. Watch this. Seated in this place right now, hearing me inside and outside, are people who love the Lord with all their hearts upon the plateau. But could it be that the explanation to the missing dimensions of the Christ in your life, it may be an absence of a particular dimension of grace. Or you need a multiplication of the grace you already have. Because the anointing works like money. If they say everybody who has money stand, you will stand with your 10,000. Aliko Dangote will stand with what he has. The demand placed on the money is what will show the difference. Are we together? Every challenge is at the mercy of the grace that confronts it. There are graces mandated to trivialize what you call a problem. It will trivialize it and you will not even know. There was an anointing on Reinhard Bonke. People called him an evangelist. Please help that person. Now, listen. A man that comes to preach in a territory and somebody who did not attend the crusade carries his charm to submit it. Is that an evangelist? Graces. The Bible is full of anointings and mantles. Please let me your attention. No grace and no anointing leaves the earth. No. 
every grace you read in this Bible is still in the earth. It's the dishonor of the saints that has closed them out. You know, years ago, I, I didn't used to operate strongly in the prophetic, but I was watching a video of William Branham. And while I was watching that video, I had an encounter and light came out from the video, was from my laptop and just rested upon my head. And then it started going down in my body for more than 30 minutes. I felt so weak. I was shaking. I just went to sleep. And by the next time I would get up, the dimension of the prophetic in my life changed. Listen. Every challenge. That's why when you go to God in prayer, he will tell you your problem has been solved. He's not lying. What he's saying is scattered across the body of Christ is a grace that your problem has been tied to. Find it. Through hunger and honor, find it. Are we together? Yes. There is a grace. This prosperity thing you see that looks like it's a difficult thing. It's good to be valuable and to be productive. But let me submit to you, there are graces that will speak once over your life and tear open your financial heavens in a way that will surprise you. It is true. You must become like a spiritual archaeologist. Searching with hunger for the graces that make for your efficiency as far as your assignment is concerned. And when God grants through the sacrifice of alignment vessels who have paid the price to convert these graces together, then you receive them with hunger. This is what is about to happen here. I prayed in a meeting and I prayed over a man in a particular church. And by the next day, he got a contract of 100 billion. When the pastor announced it, people didn't clap. Because I probably wouldn't have believed it until I saw the man. And he came to me. He said, I'm already a blessed man. But this is a dimension. Ah, the realm of the spirit. If you can manipulate realities from the realm of the spirit, you will watch life like a chess. This is what is about to change in your life. You come for meetings like this so that a climate be programmed over you. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Listen, truly speaking, I wish I were not the one saying it. There are people called to shift cities and territories. There are graces given to people. When God wants to bless Israel, he finds Jacob and puts that grace on Jacob for the sake of Israel. This is why God brought this solemn assembly to shift us to dimensions untold. But we must be discerning and not be like Jacob. 2004, I was in this very city when Red Hat Bunker came. I was in the field. I traveled from Kaduna State and I came and I stood for six hours. I was already a man of God. But I was hungry for a grace that was upon that man. Because you don't receive from a colleague. We are all men of God. You will sit down there and pride will kill you there. I didn't go to the, the field as a man of God. You've heard me humorously saying it. A pregnant woman was standing close to me. And later on, she would say, please, I should allow her to lean on me. So at a point, I said, madam, I'm not responsible for this child. What is that? I mean, I came with hunger to, to receive. You are now weakening me with your own. I mean, where is your husband? He would have come. I'm joking. I wasn't that harsh. But I, I'm saying I was determined. When her bonke finished preaching a simple message, and you know, for us that God has committed the grace for revelation a bit, we can be very arrogant. Because I mean, say, what all these simple things? I'm not even hearing. He finished a simple story. Remember, I'm the one who wants to receive. He was drinking water so that he would minister the baptism. 
And suddenly my eyes were opened. That was the first visionary experience of the person of the Holy Spirit. I saw a bird that was bigger than this auditorium hovering around the entire ground. I thought everyone was seeing it. My hunger had reached the heavens. I knew my destiny needed that kind of grace. That woman in green, I'm seeing an angel pour something like oil on her. That mama, that's what I'm seeing now as I'm just talking. I'm seeing that woman. In the name of Jesus, the woman is going to begin to have strange dreams. It's a prophetic grace that God is birthing over her. I release that grace upon you right now. Help her please. In the name of Jesus Christ. And the one at her back. I'm seeing oil being poured at a lady at her back. Please follow me. We're about to pray. When I saw that visionary encounter. Then the spirit of the Lord took me sir. To Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. There was darkness. And the spirit of God hovered around the face of the deep. And the spirit of God spoke to me. That the union of the spoken word and the movement of the spirit is what bets the miraculous. I saw it. When I came back from that vision, I was back in the stage. And I rejoiced. I said, I've gotten it. You know, Elijah said, if you can, Elijah said, if you can see me, was he not looking at him? There is a seeing that you look with hunger. Hallelujah. Every time I read God's generals, it was as if I was reading about my colleagues, my families. I started searching for people on earth that were carrying the graces and the mantles of the generals. And I bless God I've been able to meet a few of them. And one of them that I met told me, I said, tell me what Smith Wigglesworth said before he died. And he said, Smith Wigglesworth told Lester Sumro, he said, do not die with this anointing. He said, when you are old, find young men. Because there is a revival coming. He said, find young men. Mantles are falling here tonight. Anointings are falling here tonight. Graces are falling here tonight. For the kings to be born. For revival to return. For the kings to be born. For revival to return. Yeah. Hali, hali, yo. Hali, yo. Hali, yo. Hali, hali, yo. And then, when I received that impartation, watch this. The hallmark of my encounters was when my hunger had reached the heavens. Then the Lord Jesus appears to me. When the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me, I was like a dead man on the ground. The, do you know? Hmm, let me tell you the truth. Well, many people say they have seen Jesus. I don't have a right to contend with them. But if it's the Jesus I see that you see, it will take more than one year for you to recover. It has nothing to do with whether you have faith or not. How he entered my room, I cannot tell. The splendor, the majesty. He was not on the ground. Whether he was in the air, I do not know. I was like a speck of dust. He was not talking to me, but he was speaking to me. That was when I learned in the realm of the spirit that you do not have to talk to speak. Light is a language. The light, he stretched his hands towards me. Watch this. And a light left him. You've heard me say how I did not die. It's a mystery that only him can explain. When that encounter finished, he left. A straight line came from Genesis to Revelation. I started understanding mysteries I never studied. What is the meaning of this? What is happening to me? In one of the encounters that I would have in the later years, 
the Lord looked at me and he said my son from today I give you my presence as a gift and then I saw this angel standing close to me and I said who is this and he said he will walk with you and follow you in all your meetings he said he is called the angel of the Lord's presence we are not much except for the spiritual possibilities that we carry hallelujah and the last instruction the Lord would give me please listen he said every meeting I will allow you go to in that meeting there must be a few people the light that came from me to you you must allow to come to them and I have not failed help them please this listen please take it high for me David. I want you to be sensitive this is what is responsible for some of these manifestations you see it's an equipping of the spirit it's a grace for a generation it's not for a church it's not for a city tonight by the love and the relationship of your dear man of God the Lord has granted me the grace to come join in my faith with all the servants of God here please listen to me if you can humble yourself and look to Jesus in a man not just a man let me tell you you will receive something tonight that will turn your life around in a way that will shock you because there are people in ministry the deficiency is these graces you see the apostolic grace is not for church the apostolic grace is for spiritual governance it is our assignment under god to define the coordinates of the program of god as given to a dispensation and so our assignment is to come into a territory and through the sacrifice of alignment find out the precepts of the spirit allocated for a generation and the graces that should come with those thoughts and to supply them if deficient so when he sends us he sends us with all the backing and the equipping that can make that can build that can release this is my final session with us we are going to pray and please I plead that you spare me a few minutes let something from heaven that will be worth your sacrifice in this conference come upon your life and turn you into another man there are men and women of God here you must carry graces that will speak the purposes of God upon the plateau there are business people here you must carry anointings in one minute wherever you are please lift up a cry before the God of heaven Lord is my season I come with my heart open if someone pray Someone is praying for a new dimension, oh God. My ministry must change. Outside, make sure you are praying. My family must change. My political career must change. God has spoken to you about your political destiny. It's more than joining a party. It's more than having political allies. There is a grace that keeps men in their destiny.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We minister as privileged stewards of the mystery. We minister as those who have been granted grace and mercy from God. I see a lot of angels in this place. I'm seeing written in the air restoration that anointing is coming on people now please bring them out right now there is a grace people who have lost things lost time please help us let's be very fast I declare let that grace right now the grace that restores and I will restore to you take that grace now Please bring them out very quickly. I'm prophesying restoration right now. Restoration. You've lost things. Help that lady, please. Whether you are an usher or not, please help whoever is close to you so they don't injure themselves. I minister restoration by the Spirit of God that here at this fire conference, you will know that you encountered the grace that restores. I prophesy restoration opportunities restoration relationships I want to release the grace for speed there is a real grace for speed please hear me as I pray this grace the hand of God will come upon people and they will start running physically i want you to help them so they don't injure themselves right now i stand by the road of a higher priesthood just plateau state hear me i declare in the name of jesus receive the grace for speed take that grace now speed in your destiny speed in ministry i declare speed speed Ten years in one year. Ten years in one year. By the spirit of the living God. Have you heard this proverb? That in one day, a nation is born. He said, but as soon as Zion travails, she shall put forth a son. I prophesy speed. Speed in the name of Jesus. now please look up let me have your attention the Lord is showing me an eagle and every time I see an eagle it's a representation of the prophetic grace there are people here who are going to drink of this wine many men of God many women of God right now in the name of Jesus at the count of three May the eye of the eagle, the eye that sees, and the ear that hears, let it rest upon you. One, two, three. Take that grace. I activate the prophetic. I activate the prophetic. I activate the prophetic. This is that. Let there be a rain of the eyes that see. Baloki Madonna Baloki Madonna Baloki Madonna The Lord is showing me a lot of women ministries.
that will be better from this conference and there are people that anointing is coming on right now where are the daughters of Deborah I stretch my hands from the left to the right I declare by the Spirit of God let the mantle that will birth those ministries be released upon you now in the name of Jesus be released upon you now in the name of Jesus be released upon you now in the name of Jesus Hallelujah. There is a grace that establishes a man fast. I need to pray that grace because this grace is deficient in the middle belt. That the grace that establishes people fast is not there. We must trust God for the grace in the name that is above all names. I decree and declare standing in partnership with all the graces here i declare over plateau state over just the grace that stabilizes a man quick take that grace now receive that grace now you are here working miracles I worship you, I worship you, you are here, wiping every tear, I worship you, way maker, way maker, miracle work, come to sleep, light in the darkness. the word for these people the Lord says even the lawful captive shall be delivered even the lawful captive I break the siege of witchcraft there is strange operation of witchcraft I command the siege of witchcraft be broken in the name of Jesus even the lawful captives shall be delivered I will contend with them that contend with you I will contend with them that contend with you even the lawful captive the siege over your families the siege is broken right now the siege is broken I decree it and I declare it by the authority of the kingdom the siege is broken the siege is broken the lord says i should continue prophesying it that the siege is broken is broken i use this as a point of contact to speak to everyone under the sound of my voice if there is anything sitting on anyone's destiny in the name that is above all names i stretch my hands and i command in the name of jesus that every chain that holds the destiny of anyone here I command that that chain is broken right now in the name of Jesus over your life and over your family I declare that it is broken in the name of Jesus please sit down sit down just allow me to do my mad thing here for a few minutes we'll get back to the word the spirit of death oh death where is thy sting, O grave? Where is thy victory? I shut the mouth of the grave. I shut the mouth of the grave. Why am I prophesying this? I shut the mouth of the grave. 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 
I shut the mouth of the grave in the name of Jesus over every family. I shut the mouth of the grave. I shut the mouth of the grave. I shut the mouth of the grave. Listen, let me tell you. Hold on. That's not what I'm teaching. But you see this grave is a spirit. There are people there that can call people who are alive to come and join them. I have a series there and I will teach you death, hell and the grave. I will teach. The, we have a lot this year. But you see, this grave you see is not a pit. There are people. It was it not a conversation that was happening. Lazarus and they said, please let somebody go there. That means someone. That is out. That's why I say, oh grave, where is your victory? That the grave can choose a person and say, bring him to join us. I say it again. The mouth of the grave. The mouth of the grave is shot over every family. Shot over every individual. hallelujah listen don't mind the physical actors that act it can be accident it can be anything it's a lie there is a call the grave as a living thing can pick somebody and say let him come and join us i've seen the spirit of death you know that so for me it's not it's not a it's not a mystery at all hallelujah do you know i once saw a vision of someone a real vision i saw the person already buried but in the physical he was walking happy and ha he didn't reach three months that person died in the realm of the spirit this is already done with the person is alive having plans Whereas the grave has called him. Pray in one minute and shut the mouth of the grave. Pray, don't be afraid. Oh death, where is your sting? Oh grave, where is thy victory? Oh death, oh death, oh death, where is thy sting? Oh grave. Where is thy victory? I curse you by the God of heaven. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? Pray, pray. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? Pray for your family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hold on. Let me talk to that woman. You see this woman? Leave her. She knows why she's coming. Come. I'm looking at this woman and I'm seeing a woman that has already died. It's over with her. This woman I'm seeing. She has been seeing it. Dead men calling her. Calling her in the night. Some of you have seen it. People who have died. That's the grave calling you. Pray again and say I reject that call. I reject that call. Le peke toka seka para katos. Le pa katos. Shapes katos kalaba. Ke breke te ke te bala katoka sota ba. Le ke te ke te ke te ke te ke te ke te ke te. Se pokoto pokoto seketa. Le prokoto pa katos. Oh death, where is thy sting? Oh grave, where is thy victory? Oh death, where is thy sting? Oh grave, where is thy victory? Makapogoto Sokotoba. We challenge the gates of the grave. We challenge the gates of the grave. We challenge the gates of the grave. Hallelujah.
Please sit down. Just help those under the anointing. Hallelujah. This, this is what should be when you come into the presence of God. Burdens lifted, plagues stopped, not time wasted. Not time wasted. Only God knows how many obituaries were averted just by having access to intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Don't live your life anyhow becoming a victim of the wickedness. Let me teach you something. A am I boring you? Am I wasting your time? Next time you have a dream and you see dead people calling you, don't get up and just jot it down. Whether it is raining or not, if you have to cancel your job for that day, is it not when you are alive, you go for work? If you get up and see dead people where I don't care whether it's your own mother or father, once you are dead, it's gone. The familiar spirits use the face of individuals. Some of them can be our loved ones. They come and they dine with you. There are encounters. There are people who have died in Christ. They are called the spirits of just men made perfect. I have encountered some of them. But this one is dead calling you, calling your children. Sit down, allow the devil come and destroy you. That's what happens to people. They don't do anything about it. And you see, and because they don't act, one day you find out that you just get up. Whereas it was concluded. Remember the book of Job. They were discussing in heaven and the man was living happily. And in one day, everything happened. That an entity has left this realm does not mean it has stopped functioning. This realm is not the only realm where people function. There are powers that operate. They can go out of this realm and call people. Jesus knew that principle. That's why he stood and called Lazarus back. This is how to be spiritual. Not just for yourself, to help other people. Now with this knowledge, God can reveal to you something the devil wants to do about somebody because you know what to do about it. You don't sit down and it happens and say, hey, I saw it all. You stop it. This grave you see, read what Solomon said about it in the book of Proverbs. It can never say enough. This grave, it keeps opening. Hell had enlarged itself. Opens, receive people. Finds young people. Just when people are at the prime of their life, that devil comes from wherever. Don't ever make death look like a mystery. It is as predictable a spirit as sickness. Innocent people plan their lives. I don't know why I started talking about this. Plan their lives and do all. Do you know when the devil finds out that there's nothing he can do with your life? He can't make you live God. He can't make you this. The next plot is to kill you. Whether or not you die in Christ or not, at least you are dissociated from your body. It's still a plus for him. Make sure you insist that you are here for a long time. There is work to be done. Give birth to children and before the ch children are still young, you die and leave them. And leave them in the hands of wicked people. It's not to make you afraid. It's to let you know that death can, it has, it at times, death is boastful. He say, oh death, where is your victory? It's important to go where you know God is. You don't know when your word and your deliverance. When, when, when we say invite people, it's not because a man of God is looking for fame. Somebody is the answer to a family that the devil is about to crash. Just coming to stand in the cold and that's the end of it. Hallelujah. Death. We're ending that plague. You can live long, you can live strong by choice. 
and with confidence. I choose life. You choose life for yourself. Choose life for your children. If they are too small to choose, your decision can cover for them until they get to the age of discretion. Don't sit down and allow the devil say that this one is small. You see how the devil kills children as much as he kills people. Hallelujah. Let's try to discuss something. Thank you so much. For those of you who are coming for the first time, this is koinonia. This is koinonia. First John. We're looking at the epistle of John. I want to share a few things about the spirit life. God is helping us to build capacity and he's helping us to become spiritual people. And part of the the parameters for measuring spirituality like i've taught us is first our conformity to the image of the christ and then second our comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom but then there is a dimension of it that i want to introduce to us tonight and is a dimension where christ is seated at the heart of every individual and I'm not just talking of born again born again is a decision is a willingness to embrace the Lordship of Christ but there is a journey that a believer must follow to get to a point where Christ is experientially seated in his heart that place is the place of power that place is the place of authority that is the place where Satan death hell and the grave can come to you and go back because they do not have anything in you there is a realm of immunity. I'm trusting God that we rise as believers to dimensions where we no longer are the receptors of these basic things of the kingdom, but we become the distributors of this reality. Is that true? First John chapter 2 and verse 15, a popular scripture here. I want us to examine it. Just listen to me carefully. First John chapter 2. Thank you, Jesus. First John chapter 2. First John chapter 2, verse 15. The Holy Spirit is speaking to me again, and I will bring laughter to her family. And I will bring laughter to her family. I will bring laughter. You will hear again the sound of laughter, the sound of melody. You will hear the sound of laughter. You will hear the sound of laughter. That's what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. You will hear the sound of laughter. You will hear the sound of laughter. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Please follow me carefully. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Verse 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. 17. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Go back to verse 15. There is a journey into what we call carnality. Carnality is not... Um, it's not necessarily a bad word. It's just a description of a state. Please listen carefully. When we say a man is carnal, it's not supposed to be an insult. Are we together? The Bible says, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So the Bible gives us the progression of carnality. Carnality is not materialism carnality leads to materialism are we together carnality is not unrighteousness carnality leads to unrighteousness listen very carefully and this is how the journey starts number one love not the world the word world there is the world system the governing system 
the system of activities that are in the world it's not just talking about um, um it's not just talking about the cosmos alone you see that it's not just the word cosmos like the social system of the world alone but it also has an extension is the word aeon the the thinking pattern the mentality the system of operation the modus operandi that comes with the world system listen he says love not the world so that is the foundation that's how believers or people become carnal the starting point of carnality is an attachment an attachment to the system listen not receiving cars and houses that's not carnality not prosperity not poverty no that, that's not what i'm talking about many people have taught carnality from a very legalistic and religious standpoint and have robbed people of enjoying the blessings of god that's not what i'm talking about at all but then he says the word there is eros love attachment attachment so the first thing is that when a believer is about to um, begin to walk with God the first dimension of the workings of the spirit is to be able to culture and pull your attachment to this system and the appetites in this system you can have things but when they have you it's called carnality the mistake of the rich fool was not his possession he said my soul find rest that was his mistake not not the abundance but that the basis for his rest was in the supposed acquisition of those things are we together now so the bible says love not the world it's a warning it's a warning that if you want to be spiritual do not be attached that means every one of us by default born of a woman there is a probability to being attached with this system the flamboyancy that is associated with this system they are their desires and their lusts and their appetites that this is something that by default we can become victims of then he moves further and says neither the things that means it is possible that you hate the world and all of that but the things that are there you can be attached to them you see but let me tell you forget about walking with god when the things of this world are glued to you the bible we're, we're, we're still on that journey it says if any man loves the world that means he gives you a little test like saying if any man has a pounding headache there are signs that that man probably has malaria so he's saying that you can check the depth of your love for the the love of god that is at work in you you can easily check it by your attachment your attachment the same way you check your temperature your pressure and all of these things that you can check that love dimension and then it categorizes them into three it says all that is in the world the next verse 16 for all that is in the world can be categorized into three number one he calls it the lust of the flesh the limitations that come to you by reason of wearing a human body if you did not possess a body there are certain things that cannot happen to you but now because you sustain a material body that there are side effects to having this body are we together now and he's saying that you must walk with the holy spirit to culture the attachment that can happen to things by reason of wearing a body and then the second he says the lust of the eyes the limitations that come upon your life on the strength of the things you see how many of you know that the bible says the eye is the light of the body there are things if you did not have capacity to see they will not be planted in your heart the word imagination comes from the word image and that's how we think we think in pictures so you your 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 eyes creates a perception and it latches onto your heart and then it begins to be the basis of your not responding to the impulses of the spirit are we together now the lust of the eyes 
and then the third is called the pride of life you've heard me teach it the pride of life is different from pride you cannot have the pride of life until you have obvious achievements you can have pride whether or not there is anything that has been achieved but the pride of life is the vain glory and the self-glorification that is a derivative of obvious achievements like nebuchadnezzar having built babylon he said make me a 90 feet gold of my stature and that at the sound of all the music instruments let all men bow that's the pride of life the pride of life is what happened to lucifer i will exalt myself above the stars of god i will be like the most high until he was charged with iniquity are we together now and so he's saying that if you can manage the effect and the influences of these temptations in your life that the love of the father is in you and that this will culminate into a life that is spiritual listen the depth to which the power of god flows through you all these miracles these signs and wonders that you see they don't just happen because hands are laid please i, I like us let's let's be um please come david Dam. let's let's not make a fool of ourselves here there is a limit to which you can walk in the anointing just by laying on of hands there are dimensions you have to dig that spiritual well by yourself a track record that is known by principalities and powers and angels and all the forces in the heavens you don't just speak and then god it looks like god owes your word attention no sir no sir for i am a man under authority and the authority recognizes my submission and my loyalty and on the strength of my submission i say to one go and he goes i say to another come it's not my eloquence it is the authority and my degree of submission to that authority are we together now so he says love not the world brothers and sisters let me tell you thank you Dave Dan. this is the problem that jesus came to solve you see if you have an encounter with jesus listen he's not going to ask you whether you believe in the old or new testament that that is nonsense jesus is not going to ask you all those things jesus is not going to ask you and say which part of the ten commandments did you keep or which lord or no 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 he's going to ask you one question just one question his emphasis is to see whether you are seated at the throne of your own heart or he's seated at the throne of your own heart it's called christ's self-centeredness and self-centeredness christ-centeredness is when christ is the epicenter the pivot of your life this is what jesus came to give us it is from the standpoint of that state that everything you have can profit you god so designed that you can acquire things without christ being at the center of your heart but that becomes your undoing because they will destroy you and wreck your life brothers and sisters i don't care how many hours you pray i don't care how many bible study concordances you have i don't care how many services you have per week if you have not assumed a posture in the spirit where christ is at the epicenter of your heart you are carnal period period you are as carnal as the word carnal it's true it's not an insult it's a description it's a state of a believer you are spiritual not just to the degree to which you pray in tongues you are spiritual not just to the degree to which you access revelation by diligence you can commit your mind and your spirit to access light without being spiritual theologians have spent years i mean remember the scribes and the pharisees they were carnal yet they had the five books of moses out of heart so knowing the scripture by head is not necessarily a proof of spirituality it can be helpful provided christ is at the center of your heart the foundation for a life of greatness listen the foundation for a life of the miraculous any man and woman of God you see around the earth that God is using mightily to do great things 
carrying and hosting the presence of God, that individual has through sacrifice come to a point where Christ is at the epicenter of their lives. Not money, not fame, not cars, not houses. Are we together? Not wife, not husband, not marriage. That does not mean you are unconnected to these things. But that Christ sitting in your heart now gives value. Whatever comes, comes under his authority. If you don't get this, this is, this is, this is power 101. If you don't get this thing, forget about spiritual power. There are fasting giants who fast with them. They are getting lean, but they are still sitting on the throne of their heart. No, I don't work that way. Christ must become the center of your life. And you can know your attachment, your attachment to things your attachment to this system is God helping us when your life becomes Christ centered your life will speak particular languages number one thy will be done thy will be done is the language of men and women who have crucified flesh and self and that Christ is entirely allowed to be glorified in their lives. Number two, that all that is done in and through your life becomes to reveal Jesus. The revelation of Jesus becomes the obsession of your life. Not the revelation of your prestige. Not the revelation of your educational prowess. Not the revelation of oratory and money and power and influence and all of these things. The revelation of Jesus in and through your life. This is a language that is a commitment from a life that Christ is at the center. Number three, that any and all that you do becomes for his glory the lord's prayer for thine is the kingdom the power and glory thine is the kingdom i receive all of the blessings but yours is the kingdom yours is the power yours is the glory the bible says and they glorified god in me do you know Listen, do you know the reason why the more I, by the grace of God, keep learning about God, I am seeing why it is hard, come David Dam, why it is hard for many people to get the attention of God and to be committed with certain things. Remember my miracle service message last Friday? Can God trust you? That's a powerful message. Go and sit down and listen to it. Because what God gives you is a measure of his trust for you. It's, it's as simple as that. If there are dimensions you are praying about and say, Lord, lift me up, take me high. And God says, no way. Stop praying and saying, oh God, ask, Lord, what is it in me that is the resistance? What is in anointing that God cannot give you? What is in prosperity that God cannot give you? Mike shared a very powerful scripture here that he that did not spare his son but offered him freely shall he not much more with him give us all things but God is not a fool just because he said I will give you all things does not mean you just say come and carry all things he will vet your heart until he finds himself there are we together think about the things that we pursue just think for a moment list them in your mind you don't have to chorus them but list them money career power anointing revelation children wife husband house whatever it is cars and all of that none of these things in themselves destroy but when they come to you the state of your heart can make them evil or good. Are we together now? Yes. Do you know the foundation for jealousy? Listen, the foundation for envy, backbiting and all of these things is one word, self. Self. 
self it is because i want to give a perception that i am a big man so if somebody calls me joshua selman i now say where is the apostle you didn't add it you see that my ego resonated with something that is locked up within me and i react so i say this this guy you are not you are disrespecting me you are trying to say i'm not anointed you see that and this is our lives on earth are is like an an action theme people acting out the level of flesh and self and carnality sometimes we call it spirituality but it's really carnality really carnality love not the world brothers and sisters i show you a secret to rest this is where high blood pressure comes from hello hello this is where high blood pressure ask the doctors they will tell you self-inflicted worrying my ego is on the line see right my ego is on the line if this thing is not done i prophesy to david dam if that word does not come to pass they will now think i'm not an accurate man of god so my ego is on the line i'm not desirous of the prophecy to happen because i want to see his life change i am more concerned about the validation of my anointing than his own change that's the problem the scribes and the pharisees had it was not healing they would not have a problem if it happened through their hands but the fact that it didn't happen through their hands they just found an excuse and say madam don't get healing on sunday and jesus said what are you saying if your donkey falls inside a well on sunday will you leave it there and say i'll come back on monday you like money and you are talking this woman her, her health is more than your own donkey if your donkey falls inside a well won't you go and get it hypocrites jesus told them do you know if i can bring every one of us to a point where nothing in this life can take the place of christ i have brought you to a place is a level in the spirit where you will watch satan like this and he will watch you like the gulf that separated the rich man and abraham this is how you will stand truly speaking this is what empowers satan in our lives you know i've taught this here in this house comes when satan comes satan is not as accurate as we think he is listen when he comes he wants to know what is in your heart and the way he will know it is by touching areas in your life at random if he touches your relationship and you don't react he says it doesn't mean anything to you he touches money that's the one that's the area he gets for many of us he just touches your your hundred naira disappears and say no way we are fasting in this house who can and the devil says that's it that's it you think because you mention fasting god is glorified no that fasting is a is a revenge it's an emotional revenge mission your anger and your carnality is making you use a spiritual cover but it's still carnality and you put everyone under pressure nobody is eating six to six whoever did this and that and then the devil says that's it and let me tell you what he will do he will sit on your finances and rubbish your life because he knows that that is the area in your life that would distract your prayer life distract he doesn't have to stop you from praying studying the bible it's too hard he just comes to the center of your heart and touches one thing that will boomerang in every other area of your life think how hard it is for him to try to stop your prayer life stop your word life destroy your husband destroy your wife destroy your relationship it's too hard so he comes to your heart because whatever is in your heart is the control center truly of your destiny you see that all of a sudden they withhold your salary for two months and a man who was a gentle loving godly sincere born again committed church worker all of a sudden becomes a wild animal in two months because the devil got it there so instead of him saying pastor alpha beat your wife beat your children beat your relatives destroy your spiritual life he just comes and says, pastor alpha what is that one area that christ is not yet lord over when he captures it it will create all the effects that he wants satan cometh to me what is he looking for something that gives him an attachment and let me tell you that thing is what we call lost an attachment 
I hope you like what I'm, pre I'm preaching. This is a deliverance message. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I watch, do you know, brothers and sisters, Kai, whatever God did to me, may he do it to you. Truly speaking, I say it with all humility. My life is a free life. I, am, I, will be, I will be lying if I tell you it was all my effort. I think there is something about the sovereign power of God. Maybe it's an election of grace. He did it. But the moment, hold my hands, David. Down. Another person come. Emeka come. These are the luggages we carry. One other person. The ladies. I don't know how you are going to hold me. Find a way of holding. Come, 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 come. We're acting something here. Hold any part. Come and hold my hand here. Come. Can they hold you? She's afraid of holding me. She wants to hold David down. Now watch this. This is a prayer warrior. I'm showing you your spirit man. You are a prayer warrior. You are a fasting giant. You are a word addict. But you are carrying. These are the cares Jesus is begging that you give him. That we are refusing. How old are you? I'm 30. You mean it? I thought you were 42. This is the Lord. Because a broken, a broken uh, what, spirit can dry the physical bones and it will show on your face. So this guy is carrying all this load. Do you think Satan is so foolish to allow this load fall off you with the advantage he's getting? Do you know how Satan ties them? He doesn't use a rope. He uses your heart. That's what is there. This is how to be spiritual. You come to a point where you say, Lord, I love you. But these things are occupying my heart. And Lord, I'm not irresponsible. But then you have to become Lord of my life genuinely. I am too attached. I can't sleep. I sleep for one hour per day because I'm thinking about money. A man can have nothing except it is given. And you let go the issue of the job. The devil will now deceive you and say, you better be responsible. If you don't think about it, it won't come. And he said, no, Jesus, I hand it over to you. Hallelujah. This is the way of the cross. You are getting free. You too, you are strange because you are now feeling lighter. Ah, ah. Now, all of a sudden, you could pray. Before you go to pray, after five minutes, you stop praying on your own and you are thinking. But now you could stretch for one hour, two hours. You are becoming lighter. And then all of a sudden, this one is a lady. Hallelujah. Are we together? This is a lady or, or a, a, a gentleman. It can mean anybody. It doesn't have to be a lady or a, a, whatever. Lord Jesus, I must make it happen my way. And God is saying you will wear yourself to death. Lord, age is not on my side. Is it that you are not seeing? And God is saying, I am Lord of all. If I don't give you anything, it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow. And he said, Lord, I've been looking at this lady's picture. I can't even pray. And God says, I will, if you think I'm going to talk to you about that lady, you are joking. You better talk to me. Leave this lady and say, God, I want to. But this lady, she has become an idol. Maybe the lady, yes, it's true. That's the name. It's called idolatry. Let's call it what it is. She has become an idol. Not because she's bad. Are you getting what I'm saying now? But because she's doing something to your heart and it's affecting your relationship with God. So God is going to say lay it down. Lay it down does not mean leave her. Lay it down means be willing to leave her. Hi. And you say, oh God, no now. How can I leave this guy? This is my 11th relationship. And while you are talking all that nonsense, God doesn't say anything. He allows you. Then... You now cry, cry one night, lie down, roll, and let it go. Your spiritual life. You notice that the moment you surrender, something lives in you. The more you die, you can trace that this came alive because of this that went down. You see that? Love not the world. Love not the world. This one is ministry. No, I must shine. My colleagues started ministry before me, and I mean, I must do ministry. This, this is a lot of, especially some of us that have the grace of God upon our lives. No, I must start the prayer group or the church or the koinonia or whatever it is. And God says, Look, calm down. For three months, you are not holding any meetings. Oh God, my whole reputation was on this small fellowship. Now you're asking me to close it so that they won't respect me again. God said, That's exactly what I was trying to show you. 
it was never about the prayer meeting it was about you trying to use spirituality to build an ambition so lay it down you lay it down and then your encounters that stop resumes never will it resume because you are you are passionate about hearing something so that when they gather you say okay ladies and gentlemen i just came back from the throne and god said you won't use me like that is god speaking to us by the time you lay these things down let me show you the moment you focus on christ all of you come closer i'm focusing on christ look at what is happening physically are you seeing this my focus is on him and i turn back and find out so the goal was never to take them away from me the goal was to be the epicenter of my life now watch this whereas before i was the maintainer of them now he's the maintainer so anytime he says give the car after all lord is it not by your mercy it came take it not oh god this voice if it's you let my window share all this all these these things we do are proofs of carnality I was sharing with the leaders somebody called me to confirm whether it was god that spoke to him to send fifty thousand to somebody and i asked him i said if that god told you somebody is supposed to send money to you will you ask to confirm and say lord is it you it's carnality it's the same thing we're saying from my heart to the heavens jesus be the center it's all about you Yes, it's all about you From my heart to the heavens Jesus be the center It's all about you Yes, it's all about you Many people never prosper financially because of their attachment to money their attachment obsession obsession if they are passing and they smell money they turn their direction and god says no way it doesn't work that way the proof that you are not attached to anything is your willingness to let it go the genuineness anything you cannot let go you are attached to it yes sir yes sir oh i'm so blessed hearing this message myself are we together I am shocked at how many of us are shortchanging the power of God in our lives through our attachment to things. How about pastors attached to things, titles, attached to all of them? <laughs> Love not the world. This is how to be spiritual. You are giving yourself space to host his glory. Lord, I thank you I'm trusting you to get married and Lord says all right I will direct you say no Lord this is this is the lady this is the guy I must marry if you are the one it must be this and God says that's not the way it works thy will be done it is for your glory your thoughts are higher than my thoughts your ways are higher than my ways I give you all the praise that's a spiritual man Lord this is the business I want to do I thank you I have passion for it but Lord, I am totally submitted to your will. That which you want is what I will do. Hmm. That's the language of spiritual people. You see what God is doing in this ministry? It is because it is not my ministry. If it's my ministry, I would have been far older than I look now. Think how you think how I'll have to beg you and say please don't be angry pastor femi come next sunday no please if you're a pastor and you are giving yourself that headache please come to the fountain where great men can rest there is a sabbath where he takes over your life your ministry and all that concerns you a man can receive nothing except it is given to him Burn this into your spirit. You cannot have Naira and Kobo except the majesty opens the heavens over you. You cannot have any idea until he gives to you. You can invent your ways of doing things and weep and suffer and struggle. That's why we don't give. You count offering and count five Naira. You add puff puff one thousand. Took another drink. 
1,000 or wine. Are we together now? And then you come before God and squeeze 10 naira. And you are smiling now. All shall wait and God is looking at your heart. Look what Jesus did in the church. He came and stood and saw what people were giving. It was a reflection of their attachment. It wasn't the money. He saw a woman who had all. Do you know why Jesus was touched? Because she really didn't know who he was. If she had known him, he would be hypocrisy because he was there. She just came. That means she was doing it unsupervised. It was what she would do. Whoever this God is of the Hebrews, I love him. And I lay down everything. Love not the world. This is the problem of many people's destinies. Attachment. Attachment to money. God gave you a car. All of a sudden, you carried that car and put it in your heart. The garage is not enough for it. How can you have a garage for a car and, not, and no altar for God? It's, it's carnality. We build our homes with garages for five cars. And then you meet with God inside the toilet. You, you see our value? When you go to ease yourself, that's when you say, oh Lord, I'm alone with you. And God says, you are not serious. No. You provide a cupboard where you keep your documents, your certificate, because your paycheck is there. And then where do you keep him? He's not in your heart. He's not even around. Far be it from me to create a shrine to keep any other thing when I've not made sure. He says, David said, I'm sitting here in a palace and Lord, I know you sit in the heavens, but I've not built you a house. And God said, ah, you would have built, but you've shed so much blood. However, it was good that it was in your heart. Or you have gathered the materials together and let your son be the one to build that temple. All I want is for you, for you to be glorified, for you to be lifted. All I want is for you, for you to be glorified, for you to be lifted. Luke chapter 15. Let me show you something in the story of the prodigal son. Luke chapter 15. Please give us verse 11. I found out that both the elder brother and the younger brother did the same thing. The story of the prodigal son. For many years we have harassed the younger brother and left the elder brother. All of them did different versions of the same thing. Follow me. Verse 11. And he said a certain man had two sons. How many sons? Two sons. Next verse. And the younger of them said to his father, Give me a portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them. Now watch this. Do you know that the house was all about his father, but the children had access? But then the child was angry because it was not in his name. That's selfishness. Self-centeredness wants it in your name. So that somebody was healed in Koinonia. No, I'm not happy. Let it be that Apostle Joshua Selma was the one who God used. So I'm not, I'm more concerned about my name being touched to the miracle than it is the God of heaven that touched the person. That's self. Are you seeing that now? Yes. The younger son had everything. But every time he saw his father, he had to wait on his father. Daddy, I want something. And the father said, okay, just a few minutes. I said, no, no. I want something so that I will, it will be in my name. And said, Daddy, I'm tired of depending on you. Ah, that's what Christians do. Lord, I'm tired of waiting on you for this power. Give me this thing so that I can do it anyhow I want on stage. Why must I wait for you and worship before you come? Don't you know that it's falling my hand? After clapping for me and giving me water, I come and stand on the stage and I say, Lord, you have to come. Whereas people on my, it's my t-shirt they are wearing with my face, not your face. So Lord, give me this power so that I can operate it independent of you. Prodigal son. He didn't want it. He wanted it in his name, meaning his control. The father said, all right, everyone that asketh receiveth." Now watch this. It says, and not many days after the younger son gathered all together, he took on his journey. Are you seeing? He did not want submission. Uh -uh. 
a self-centered life wants to be the lord of yourself the custodian of your decisions to hell with any and everybody i am the lord of myself it's a terrible way of living it says and he did what wasted wasted his substance with riotous living party and all of that because he felt by showing his friends money they will respect him you see that and so he showed all of that and what happened we're reading and when he had spent all there arose a mighty famine in the land and he began to be in want where did limitation enter his life when he left there was abundance and there was supply could it be that your limitation in every area is a reflection that you are dissociating yourself from the authority of the father building an empire for yourself and now you are having to foot your bills by yourself 15 and he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and sent him into the fields to feed swine brothers and sisters once in royalty having abundance to the point that even the servants were considered privileged people now because he declared that he did not want his father to be the regulator of his life and his activities he wanted to regulate everything by himself this was his destiny and he would fain have filled his belly with this horse that the swine did eat and no man gave unto him 17 and when he came to himself you can be sure that he came to his mind he said how many hired servants of my father have bread enough to eat and spare and i perish with hunger 18 i will arise and go to my father that's what someone needs to do this night and i will say father i have sinned against heaven and before thee 19 i am no more worthy to be called your son make me as one of your servants verse 20 hallelujah and he arose and came to his father but when he was yet a great way off listen his father saw him and had what compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him keep reading and the son said to him father i have sinned against thee and in thy sight i am no more worthy to be called thy son 22 but the father said to his servants bring forth the best robe now hold on the elder brother is about to come now so watch carefully bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet 23 and bring hither the fatted calf and kill and let us eat and be merry why for my son was dead and now is alive to be separated from the authority of god is death to be carnally minded is death you see there but to be spiritually minded is life and with it peace and he was lost and is found and they began to be merry scene two now the elder son was in the field and he came and drew nigh to the house and had music and dancing the guy will always say he's innocent let's examine him now and he called on one of the servants and asked what these things meant 27 and they said unto him thy brother is come and thy father had killed the fatted calf because he had received him safe and sound and he was help me and would not go in therefore his father came out what if, whoever that father is must be a good father the father left the party and came out and met him and entreated him 29 and he answered now watch this you see this this is what the father the boy said lo many years do i serve thee neither transgress i at any of thy commandment and yet thou never gavest me so two of them wanted ownership it's just that one had it secretly in his heart and another verbalized and said give me two of them had the same lust it's just that one was vocal enough to manifest it whereas and was he not eating in the house was he not celebration that was going on was he not a calf that was but he want he said let me go and make merry with my friends is it not the same thing the younger brother was doing two of them two of them were expressions of the same thing one was quiet just like you and the other one is vocal like the sinner roaming around but the truth is that it's still the same thing 
Jesus, you be lifted higher. Higher. Be lifted higher. Jesus, you be lifted higher. So, there can be an outspoken brother who is carnal and wants everything. It must be car, it must be money, it must be reputation. And you are the quiet brother. You are the elder brother. You like it. You like the honor. You like the prestige. Are we together? You like and you can kill for it. It's just that you are not that courageous. So, we will be deceived into thinking you are the nice person. And the other one who is vocal. But the word of God declares to us that two of them need the attention of their father. Their father attended to the younger one. And he still had to come and attend to the elder one. Because two of them had the same problem. Christ-centeredness. Maybe it's because you have not had a big ministry. That's why we have not seen the full potential of what is in your heart. It may not be that you are humble. Maybe it's because Joshua Selman has not owned a private jet. That's why you think he's a humble brother. So God draws me down. Say, Mr. Man, stop looking at jet. Look at my face. So that let's flog this out before jet kills you and takes away there are people who would throw God out of the plane and remain there alone. Tonight is a call. You want to experience power? You want to experience miracles? You must come to a point in your life. Brothers and sisters, you can stand in front of your Jeep like this and say, what a beautiful car. And turn and say, Lord, truly, if you make demand of this, I will give you. And you are not just doing church language. It's from your heart. Yes. It's from your heart. That way, when God gives you the gift of a wife, you will not beat her and say, I must beat you. That's how we are in our family. When we are angry, we beat, we ask for forgiveness later on. That attitude is because you do not know that a man cannot have anything except it is given to him. When God gives you children, you will not allow them to become lawless and say, no, it's westernization. Because you will know that everything God gives you, he demands that you act as though it's his own. God never gives us ownership. Owners are rebels in this kingdom. We are stewards of everything. His resources, mysteries, whatever it is. It belongs to him. It only passes through me. So brother, you want to become a multi-millionaire? Do you have the grace to give and give and keep giving and support the work of the Lord and support lives? If it's not in your presence If it's not by your hand If it's not by your spirit, please don't let me have it. For everything I need is in you. If it's not in your presence, if it's not by your hand. Your spirit, don't let me have everything I need is in you. Question Does your wardrobe belong to him? Does your bank account belong to him? Does your anointing know you fasted for it to come, but does it belong to him now? Does your wife belong to him? Does your husband belong to him? Does whoever you are in a relationship with, does it belong to him? Do your children belong to you? Or they are his property? You are only a steward over them. Does your business belong to you? Does your church, does Koinonia belong to him? Or is Joshua Selman's property? Is his um, 
ladder of greatness ah far be it from me too young for that kind of stress don't let me have it let everything i have be from you please don't let me have it for everything i need is in you listen this is the level where you will see dimensions of power beyond your wildest imagination someone will sit down on your bed and stand up and all of a sudden the fibroid is gone it was so unconscious there is an effulgence of glory that you carry and walk with you broke is a joke God will shake people everywhere to make sure he brings resources for you the things that people do for me never never stop amazing me I thank God for the things that God does but I am so sometimes I just look and I say Lord Kai someone was going to bless me a few days ago and it was quite a very large amount and the person just said, oh, please send me your account number. And I just, as I was ending the call, the Spirit of God was speaking to me about a family that that money was for. You know why God can speak to me like that? Because my life, the account and the favor is his own. I was so happy when he said it. Not just as a law for abundance. It's with all pleasure. My one desire is that you be praised that you be praised that you be praised you're my one desire that you be praised that you be praised that you be praised hear the word of the Lord tonight Please come unto me. Come unto me. All ye that labor, labor, profitless labor, labor that you have carried your heart and put inside. <laughs> there is a realm of rest. A man can enter the rest of God. It's not irresponsibility. Everybody knows he's the doer of the miracles. He is the opener of the door. He is the lifter of men. You have separated your ego from these things. If it happens well for you, glory be to God. If it does not happen well to you, Lord be praised. If the child comes, Lord, I thank you for the testimony. If the child does not come, Lord, while I wait, I still love you. That's one who is Christ-centered. Listen, that's a spiritual man. That's a spiritual God is speaking to us. We need to be careful. Our lusts and our appetites are leading us through roads of destruction. We need to come back and say, Lord, I hand everything over to you. People are marrying wrongly because of self, flesh. The lady must be this beautiful figure eight. The guy must be this, a millionaire must be this. And people keep jam-packing rubbish and trouble into their lives. How about people who don't even... Gone are the days, this issue of hearing God. People have eroded it. You just get up and say, I want to go to Abel Kuta because there's green pastures there. How about brothers and sisters? Let's respect and fear God. There were times where people never took any step until they heard from God. They would rather be considered failures. We've thrown all that away because of our ego. Let them not say, I'm a graduate and I am not working. If it's not in your presence, if it's not by your hand, If it's not by your spirit, please don't let me have for everything I need is in you. Listen, we're about to pray. Think for one moment the causes of your worry this morning. 
Think of the reason why you woke up by 2 a.m. in the morning. All that worry. Trace it down. It is self. It is self because he gives his beloved sleep. You rejected it because you are empty. I don't mean waking up to plan your life. There are many they just wake up and say, life. What a terrible life. How can this ministry grow? How can this ministry grow? Oh Lord, do this, this. How can this ministry grow? And God said, you have been talking about ministry for one week. You have not talked about me. You forgot about me and you have been drumming. Lord, my church must grow. And God says, how about me? Will I grow in your heart? Say, God, leave the show of you. My church must grow. Prophecy came that is my year of this and that. Lord, why is it that I go for meetings and nothing happens? I love you, I fast, but I stand at the end of the meeting, I'm ashamed. And God says, when you die to me and it no longer becomes about you and your reputation, then you will see the glory of the Lord. This is my daily prayer. I'm, I'm praying that God will infect you with that hunger tonight. Please hear me. God is speaking to us. I want you to take, I'm not preaching. I'm talking from the depth of my heart, transferring something from me to you. We need to repent of self-centeredness and let Jesus Christ be the epicenter of our lives. May God forgive me if I'm lying, but there is nothing I know in my life today that I cannot give God. I ask for forgiveness if I'm telling a lie. But there is nothing I know. Especially things. Things. I can't be that stupid. No. Some of you are about fighting with somebody because of 100 naira change. God spoke to you since last month. Leave it. Say, no way. I fight for my right. Lord, this is how I left it the other time. They would take me for granted and God is talking to you. Oh, the tailor was supposed to correct this. You must correct it and I won't pay you anything. I will show you that I'm educated. And God said, you see this? The foundation is flesh. Listen, blessed are the peacemakers. Have you heard that scripture? Do you know who a peacemaker is? He says, seek peace. And if you don't find it, pursue it. Look for it by any means. For everything I need is in you. We surround our lives with needless worries as a proof that God can no longer provide. Ha! I will never forget during our crusade, one of, I think it was 2006, a Jimmy had a laptop. He was the only one that had, was it? No, it wasn't a laptop, it was a computer. He was the only one who had a computer at that time. And we're trying to raise money for the crusade. And that's how this guy. I think it was, he just put a notice in the uh, hostel there, Suleiman. Computer for sale. I was so touched. I don't know how many of them he has now. He will get it and buy it and buy it and buy the factory. That's what happens when you're hard. Stop admiring people that the gates of heaven are open over. Find out what they did for God to trust them this much. Don't say you are lucky. It's because your father is this. My father is a lie. God supervises our hearts. I've taught it here in Koinonia, but let me say it. When God is closing a door over somebody, don't open it. Don't open it out of sympathy. There are people that I've wanted to help with all my heart and God has stopped me again and again. There is a dealing God is rotting in their life. Don't interrupt the dealing of God. Are we together? There are pastors for many years. They love God, but their church will not grow. They are serving God and sometimes you can pity them and say, look, just invite them. Let me come and speak over your meeting and mobilize people for you. And God says, you are doing the mistake that Achan did. Well, um, not, not Uzzah. You are doing Uzzah's mistake. You want to help God to hold the ark. And you find that it will not only strike you, it will strike others associated with you. Our hearts must be given to him. Ladies, please look at me. Sisters, let's hand over our hearts to him and end this lust for things. Clothes, shoes, they are wonderful. God will give you more than your wildest imagination. 
brothers let's drop this big manism and appetite for titles and a proof to show i am rich so that all and sundry will respect you is all nonsense if you are great you are great honor is a mantle if you don't have it you don't have it. it's as simple as that tonight is a night of thorough repentance we are going to cry before god and confess the idolatry the sin the carnality of idolatry to say lord i've carried this thing on my head like a do or die affair and it's almost killing me i hand it over there is peace in handing over your life to god there is peace in handing over your children to god there is peace in handing over your job hand over the difficult boss don't try to go and be looking for a godfather and the godfather say 50 50 agreed and you are in trouble no allow god who would do it 100 zero he will give you bless you we commit ourselves into things and projects god has no business in because we cannot let him have his way have your way lord have your way have your way lord have your way have your way lord have your way oh lord have your way i don't share so much of my testimonies because i want people to focus on jesus and the things that i'm teaching we came back from lagos last week and after the meeting I was counseling people and I came out to just, you know, see the pastors and, and then a gentleman was standing there and he was telling me that, sir, I just wanted to tell you that I brought a car here for you. And then I'm looking and say, my God, what is all this? I, 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 because when I hear those kind of things, I feel guilty. It's as if I'm even bullying them. I just, just talk to this, please talk to the protocol people and let the church, whatever they want to do with it there. And I came back and I think day before yesterday or so, it's still called the protocol. The church has said somebody has given a post to the cow. How do we convey it and bring it there? It is this car that someone has left God for. Father, this car must come. This is already, um, what month are we now? February. Car, it must come. And God is saying, Abba, is this how small I am to you? I want to show you something. Open to the book of Matthew. Say, Matthew chapter 1. God, I've been crying. I've been saying, can God is saying, look, look how you are making a mess of yourself. When you love God and fear God, please hear me. He would take the prayer request of somebody. It's not because I'm a man of God. Go and ask him what I'm doing. Don't just say you are lucky. There's no luck in this thing. You work it out with fear and trembling and passion and fire. Have your way. Have your way. We are fighting too many battles in our lives these battles are not even there they were created by our lost sister let god bring a husband for you please rest rest and watch what god can do for you in two weeks 10 years of labor and manipulation can end in two weeks of saying lord i hand it over to you i vow that i'm going to be a blessing to whichever man you bring and while I wait for him, I will love you, I will serve your house, and I will prepare for the blessing. God says, that's it. That's all I'm looking for. And all of a sudden, the brother will not be able to sleep again. He will see clearly. There's no haze, there's no confusion. Straight. This is your wife. Stand up and go and see her parents. Instead of walking it out by yourself and sweating around, what of brothers? I must do this. If I can call this one and then he calls this one for me and then I just connect with Pastor Alpha. If I can beg a Jimmy and then beg a Benga and then beg this and that. I, if I put them from, I think three plus three will be six. Three plus three will be not be six forever because there are demons. There are wicked forces that will keep minusing one, minusing different things and the equation never adds up. But when you add it over to God, one plus one can be six. One plus one is anything God says the answer is. If God says it's one million, that's it. Mathematics say one plus one must be two. God says, I create. I don't see under. No, no, no. Whatever I want, the earth is the Lord's. So God can say your third class plus your mother's firewood job equal to an estate. This is God. This is God. 
whereas your flesh can say NMPC plus an auxiliary uncle in the bank can still equal to pain and suffering we are going to pray tonight the Lord is bringing us to the place of rest the spirit life demands that our desires listen our appetites our ambitions our aspirations come under submission to his will this is all God is asking I was so blessed by Mr. Job's testimony and the wife did you hear what they said they had been trusting God for a baby boy are you seeing that but notice the progression of the way he shared the testimony the first thing he said was his spiritual life and the way God put his life in order and then without any effort as it were a child came could it be that your prayer request your heart is too full for your prayer request to be given to you when you empty it and keep Christ alone then he begins to bring every and anything we are going to sing take all of me please take it high for me don't just sing it as a special number I want you to sing it from your heart some of you as you are singing it God is going to be dealing with you and talking with you take all of me all of me Lord you have my everything take all of me all of me Lord you have my everything take all of me all of me Lord you have my everything say take all of me all of me Lord you have my everything use all of me use all of me all of me Lord you have my everything take all of me take all of me all of me I release my everything You have my everything Say All of me All of me Lord You have my everything Say all of me All of me All of me Lord You have my everything You all of me Say all of me All of me away the idol that sits in my heart attempting to take your place lift your voice and cry take it away except the Lord builds a house they labor in vain except the Lord builds a house they labor in vain except the Lord builds a house they labor in vain Take it away. Let that circumcision in the spirit. Let that circumcision over money. Let that circumcision over power. That circumcision over titles. Let it happen, oh God. Purge me. Purge me. Purge my heart. remove everything every lust that I'm so attached to every lust that I'm so attached to 
that will not allow me enthrone you a Christ-centered life a life where everything about you aside from God nothing is a do or die affair Christ Lord and throne hallelujah prayer point number two mention everything you think is greatness in your life and say you come under the lordship of jesus mention it whatever god has done and given you mention it by name and bring it under the lordship of jesus the marriage you gave me i bring it under the lordship of jesus the children you have given me they are taught of the lord and great is their peace i rededicate them a handover ceremony the job you gave me i hand it over to you the relationship you gave me i hand it over to you if you brought it you are the one who can maintain it the burden is killing me pray the burden is destroying me Lord, you are the one who gave me the prayer group, the church, the business. I'm tired of struggling by my strength. Bring me rest. Bring me rest. The rest that only you can bring. your life like a charm favor open doors i tell you the bible says behold i and the children whom who gave you who gave you is god that gives increase i and the children the lord had given me are for signs and for wonders in zaria in nigeria in israel but where do the signs and wonders come from from the lord of hosts 
I and the children that God has given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts. We are going to pray. You are connected to this vision. You are part of this ministry. Pray and say, Lord, not only will my life produce signs and wonders, I will be an epistle of that possibility. Lift your voice and pray. I declare, pray that I and the children that the Lord has given me, we are for signs and for wonders, for signs, financial signs and wonders, supernatural signs and wonders. Dimensions of revelations, dimensions of encounters, dimensions of increase, dimensions of influence, dimensions of prayer grace, access to the mysteries of the kingdom. Spiritual men, kingdom minded people. Hallelujah. Can I add one last prayer point for us? I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, I make a vow before you that whatever you bring to pass through my hand or my life is already rededicated for your glory. Pray that prayer and watch my God surprise you. Pray that prayer and God will give you in one day what your salary cannot give you in one year. Pray that prayer and God will give you houses you did not build. Dimensions of revelations you were not fasting for. Pray. Lord, I rededicate everything. My intellect, the anointing, my home, my wealth, the influence. that I need salvation that's somebody talking saying apostle if you will make an altar call I need to run to Jesus no playing games no playing games I need Jesus fast I need Jesus fast and there are people here saying apostle I thought that my heart was really with him but now I'm realizing that I need to rededicate my life I'm only going to count one to three because of time I want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come and stand here very quickly one one are you coming quickly if you are still thinking about it stay back outside because once here is full we may not have people here again we have to stand outside ready to be Run to Jesus with all your heart. Swallow your pride tonight. Come to the school of the spirit. Don't you know in his hands are the keys to eternal life? Hey, it's a little here, a little dear. Then 
your day will dawn is at work in you, changing everything in obedience to God. You're the Holy Ghost. Apostle, I'm not sure whether I'm born again or not. Join them quickly. If you are not sure you are not born again, join them quickly. And come and clear every gray area in your life. This is a destiny thing with Jesus. He's the center of everything. Those of you who are standing here, please just pray in one minute and say, Lord, I'm serious. I'm not just coming out because I'm emotional. I really am serious. I come to you like the prodigal son. I know you will not cast me. Men may cast me away. Critics may cast me away, but you never cast anyone away. If you're joining them, please quickly join them. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Our time is gone. I want you to lift your hands. I see a number of you. And those of you following online from whatever nation, whatever time zone it is there, connect with us. You are handing your life over to Jesus. The Bible says the word is nigh thee, even in thy lips and in thy heart, the word of faith that we preach. Say after me, those of you here and all those who are connecting, say, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. Tonight, I come to you believing that you alone can save me, can change me, can lift me. I ask that you take over my entire life use it for your glory i receive your life tonight into my spirit and i declare that i'm a child of god the grace to love jesus and to live victorious is mine today and forever keep your hands lifted i declare your sins forgiven I declare by the immutability of God's counsel that you belong to him. Partakers of his divine nature. I bless you. I command and curse the power of sin, the power of hell, the power of the grave, the power of sickness and everything that is not in the Christ over your life. I declare that it leaves you right now in the name of Jesus. I pray that the grace that keeps men, please help those under the anointing there. The grace that keeps men in the name of Jesus will keep you. And I decree and declare that everything that does not represent God in your life lives now and forever. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Thank you so much. There are a number of you. I want you to follow the gentleman waving his hands quickly. There are a number of you. Just cooperate with them. They will lead you. Dearly beloved. I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Alaska de Bashka Nakata Branda Katekatos Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take a legata. The phase of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.